tonight's agenda tonight. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to move things uh, uh, fairly quickly here. Um, the first item on the agenda is going to be the, um, the Shelter Brightview Continued Review of Changes. So this is what, uh, just as a reminder, this is what we uh, started to take a look at at the last meeting. This is with respect to some uh, different changes that were made on, uh, to the as built. And uh, David, if you want to come on up and introduce uh, yourself and anyone else, um, we can start running through um, what you've got to present us to the day. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having us in again. Appreciate the time. Um, so uh, what we wanted to do was follow up from our meeting two weeks ago. Uh, there's a handful of additional discussion items that we wanted to address. Um, and I'm going to let Katya go through those things, but I'm going to give you just a quick overview from my perspective from our last meeting. Uh, they, we went through a number of elevation changes, which I think, generally speaking, everyone got a comfort level with what we were doing. Uh, but we wanted to come back and address particularly some landscaping issues um, and then some issues around the parking and the lighting. Um, I have five items from following up from our last meeting. The last two I want to leave to the end, which relate to the, the parking and the snow storage mm -hmm. uh, and the lighting, that package, if you will. Um, what I'd like to do is go through um, all of them uh, and let Katja explain the changes we're making, the proposed changes we made from our, our last set of plans. Um, and then if there's some satisfaction with that, great. If there's not, I think we have a couple of additional solutions around the parking and around the snow storage that we can absolutely explore if that meets, uh, meets the discussion and, and keep on uh, spend more time with some alternatives. All right, so the list that I have um, is the greening or the greenery uh, landscaping around the courtyard drop-off area. That's item one. Um, item two will stay in that area, which is the, um, the, uh, the stamping of the um, asphalt drop area at the entry and the connection to the island. Um, so that's number two. Number three, on the rear of the building, relates to the landscaping around the exhaust of the generator. And then four and five relate to the snow storage and the parking slash uh, lighting impact. Okay. So those are the items we want to walk through, and I'll let Kachi go through some of the detail of those, especially the first three items. Okay, great. Um, is it all right if I stand up? <laughs> you can stand. Okay. You maybe don't want to block that. Okay, when I get to pointing camera. to that, I will move over so that can be seen too. Um, the plans you have include the approved plan from a couple years ago, the plan where we were two weeks ago, and then the proposed plan on the last page, I believe, which is also represented right here, the same plan. Um, in addition to that, I want to hand out some existing conditions pictures of the retaining wall. Christine suggested that I print out some existing conditions photos. Cool. How many did you have enough for one share? Yes. Okay, great. I have 10, I think. Okay. Oh. Perfect. And on the sure. second page is a photo montage showing the proposed plantings, yeah. as depicted also on the plan, in the plan view. They are, of course, photo representations. So they show like a green growth, and this here we are in the winter. Um, there's no grass shown at the ground thing, et cetera. So it's a little bit different than reality. Mm -hmm. And on the last page, there's a section showing a proposed planting detail for the top of the retaining wall. So um, the first item that uh, David said we'd be speaking about is the greening up or the landscaping or on the drop off. Um, between the approved plans and now, as you know, the retaining wall has shifted a little bit closer to the building. And the drop-off circle had to be shifted as well. And so the, the parking spaces within that drop-off had to be moved. So what we're doing here is um, adding back some of the green that we lost. We had lost three crabapple trees around here. And we are now in this plan showing the ability to add back one of those three trees uh, by shifting the curb. The parallel parking space here can still be accessed by code. I think it's a 20 by uh, 8 foot or 9 foot uh, space, Fields and Thomas. Um, located the proposed curb as shown in the plan so that people can still get in and out of that parallel space. Um, so we have added back another crab apple. In addition to that, I'm showing a grouping of a, like, a rhododendron and then a number of uh, spirea, bomada, and penny water um, uh, shrubs at the base of the retaining wall in pink on this plan. 
Um, some other shade, uh, shady kind of shrubs at the base of the wall here, rhododendrons and clephra, and then a, a variety of vines at the um, top and bottom. At the bottom, some uh, Virginia creeper, which can kind of cling to the wall and climb up. Uh, at the top, a combination of a shrub called Stephanandra, which drapes down and cascades down walls quite nicely. Um, some juniper horizontalis, a kind of real low evergreen shrub that will also drape down. And some clematis virginiana, which is a, a native clematis vine, which um, might fall somewhat down the wall, but I thought could also grow up, grow up along um, the picket fence that's on top and beyond. And in the section on the last page, you can see how that might work with the existing retaining wall blocks have, a, have voids within them, which um, if you remove some of the crushed stone could be replaced with planting mix planted um, uh, within that void. And there's additional soil layer at the top of the retaining wall. There's no capstone per se. So the soil layer will help um, allow those roots to grow and spread across the top soil layer. Um, so it's not just the little voids in the wall where the plants can grow and have the root system. I think the root systems can spread on top a little bit. Can I just clarify? I want to be sure I understand. The March 25th, yes. this is what you're describing right now. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So that hasn't changed. That's what you're That's what's here. That's okay. the same that was shown right here. So that's what's proposed. The, the March 11th. 25th yes. list. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Some of the other changes um, or suggestions. Yes. Are we? Are you done explaining what we're doing in the courtyard area? Yes, I think I think what we're doing is expanding some of the green space at the base of the wall, and adding a lot of greenery <coughs> to the top and bottom of the wall. Um, I guess my question to the board is: Do you want to uh, discuss any of the points that Katya is, is raising in our proposal? Any questions? And does this meet the satisfaction of, of the effort of our last meeting on this point? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think this point and the fifth point kind of coincide, is that correct? So I think that's the one thing I'll say, but I'll, I'll mm -hmm. let them fire away. I'll, I'll defer to Christine. <laughs> well, Katja and I spoke offline while she was developing this plan, and I'm happy to see that she's incorporated a lot of the things we talked about. So the, the parking space has gotten a little bit smaller, which is good, and that's allowed a larger island there for planting. So that'll help because we can add another tree in there that's going to help screen the wall a little bit. My objection last time was the view of that mm -hmm. very exposed wall. Mm -hmm. So I think you've done a lot to try to mitigate that. You'll have vines coming down, you'll have vines coming up. You've planted quite a bit more along the top and taken away the layer of crushed stone that was up there and replaced it with soil. So I think all in all you've tried to mitigate the fact that the wall had to shift a little bit and tightened up that space. Right. Um, Jake explained last time the, the pinning of the wall was quite technical and that was difficult to keep the same spacing that you had before. So now the top is a little bit wider mm -hmm. at the sidewalk than it used to be. So the public has a little bit more yeah. width, which is nice. <laughs> but uh, I think you've accommodated that quite well. Uh, I'm wondering, um, do we want to bring up Headlights at this point, or do we want to wait till later? I'm I'm happy to, um, but it sounds like you were waiting for to make your presentation before going to that. Um, headlights has a little the, bit to do with yeah, the planting. Yeah, parallel I think. space. And yeah, yeah, there was the some concern of headlights hitting. I think it makes sense to talk about it now. That's hitting um, hitting the house across the street, mm -hmm. and uh, we were sent an email with some photos of what that right. looked like actually. Mm -hmm. And in looking at the plantings that are there right now, you've added a little plant, a little bit of plantings at the sign. Um, which is good. That should help. When all the plantings are in, that should help because there's some across the entrance also. Down here too. Yeah, yeah. What, I, what I did notice is that that corner right across is, um, that's a deciduous shrub. And I'm wondering if those could be replaced with an evergreen or if the evergreens that are just down from there could be expanded mm -hmm. and have another row behind that if you want to it's nice to have some deciduous because I think the rest are evergreens. Mm -hmm. But the way those lights are pointing yeah. That could help through all the seasons then. That's too. a good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. I think if you put evergreens behind and, and get a little bit right. closer to the trees maybe, if you have room for that, yeah. that might be one way to do it. Um, I think you had rhododendrons there, so adding five more might help. 
and during the layout of plants, I can shift things around here, the existing list here, to make sure that there's some evergreens in that zone, you know, standing where the where there'd be car headlights facing down. Yeah, right look here. at where the headlights are and, and maybe check out it. the elevations as you're looking across. Yeah. yeah. And see that it does, what you're putting in there will help. Yeah, it does slope down a bit. So I'm yeah. not I don't know how successful Mm. Yeah, so Trust I went last a night, more just to let you know, and, yeah. I, and I parked there. And when you park in that spot, there you're is high. no avoiding the fact that you're high mm. on that, above that fence. Um, okay. There's a real issue there, uh, as far as that parking spot is concerned, uh, with the headlights coming over. So. But you know that issue, in looking at the photos, that issue is going to be there even for cars doing the turnaround. That might be the case. It's the same issue. It, 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 it might be the case, but it's not a parked car with their headlights on or something like that for a longer time than someone driving in and driving out. I mean, who knows whether someone just parks there with their phone doing a call. I mean, I know if I keep my car on, the auto stays on. For me, I went there last night, and that, you know, that was that was disappointing, I guess. So, this is how that goes. Yeah, I, uh, I've also noticed that, you know, without the trees yet being planted along here, um, these tilia cordata have a really dense foliage, and I think their canopies are going to help at that elevation, shining this way. Except in winter. Except in winter, sure. although they have a dense branching habit too, somewhat. Well, Kachi and I talked about it. We just we sat in that spot for the last mm -hmm. hour as well. Yep. And remember to turn our lights off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. But but we clearly now I can see exactly what you're talking about. Right. So we're very sensitive to it as well. And again, we can propose something different, but I wanted to just talk through the solution here first. Um, when we sat there and said, boy, if you maybe put two or three rhododendrons there that are going up four or five feet, certainly above, for instance, an SUV's lights, mm -hmm. that is dramatically going to take down the light that could occur by a parked car there. And then beyond that, is, as you pointed out, even though it's somewhat down slope, we will have a mixture of evergreen and other planting on the other side, um, right there. So I think there's a, an ability to shield it. If it's unsatisfactory as you think about it in all the seasons, we can think about it in alternative <coughs> to discuss with you tonight. But I wanted to just talk through this proposal first and see if that met yeah. mitigating the concerns. I wonder if an actual panel of a fence there <coughs> wouldn't solve the problem yeah, right yeah, at the, about that. right in front of where the car would be and it could be a, you know it could be something that you could hit and it wouldn't mm -hmm. destroy mm -hmm. you know something a little bit flexible we could be open to that we wanted to yeah. look aesthetically pleasing I know as well, I know I, I wanted, wanted to be to out also. of place um, yeah that's why we want to prefer to stay with an evergreen type of <coughs> material on the sure. plan right now I have one rhododendron you do and two spirea you know, Anthony water maybe all three, at the size that they'll be planted, it might be better to put three rhododendron in, and then eventually as they kind of overgrow the space, and remove one, but to get the full effect of some shielding of high, high, uh, headlights. You think you have room there to do that? Well, three is <laughs> a smaller, yeah, they're, it's tight, yeah, but it I think we look. should try to get them in. I think there's room for three shrubs. Or one large, invest in one very yeah. large well, 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 you say yeah. one large, but you've got that big street light right there. That's oh, the street light, yeah. I'm so, talking about the headlights right now. No, 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 we're not talking light. about any street lights as far as lights is concerned. No, I'm saying if you look at the plan, if you oh. look at the problem with one, is you've got the street light right in front of the, the car. The car. So, so, so having right. one with, would be... Well, there is a bed right in front there of There is that. a bed, yeah. So Okay, I didn't think there was much room. There it's tight, but there is a small An ability bed. to have a relatively large rhododendron in there. Um, again, I'm not the expert, but... The base yes. of the light pole should help, actually. <laughs> it does, no, because it basically you're on either side. On either side. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's right in the middle. <laughs> so the shrubs also need to be on either side, I guess. That's that's kind of what I. That's why. There's not as much room on the left as you're facing into the light post to plant yeah. something to the left of the light post. So the, I think that the left headlight is more of an issue than the right headlight. Right, because that's where the sidewalk is. Yes. That's correct, and then there's a railing there for the ADA. Maybe we can ponder that and move on in the interest of time. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the second thing we we're going to... Well, um, before we do, any, any yeah, other sorry. questions? I don't want to skip uh, <laughs> Andrew and Andy uh, before we move on on that. I mean, we can come back to you know, the discussion, but 
No, I don't know anything from them. I think we've got to look at the options here. Yes, okay. We'll be glad to address yeah. that. But the bag plantings are much more robust also, as you had mentioned at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. well, sure. And I think that's good. And I, I think that the exhaust <coughs> pipe in the back, it, you had suggested painting it to match the building or painting it to match Absolutely. the vegetation, depending which yeah. seems to work better. I, that should probably. Right, I think I think they were going to present on that yeah. next. We oh. gonna, yeah, sorry, I wasn't moving on from everything. Yeah, you covered it pretty much. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Did you pay attention? We're going to, we're going to, yeah, yeah so on the, yeah, sticking great. within the drop off for quickly and then moving to the exhaust. Um, within the drop off, the, there was um, some concern that the crossing that we had suggested before, uh, the <coughs> concrete crossing, which would indicate more of a pedestrian kind of uh, friendly area which um, isn't shown anymore. We were going to do a painted crosswalk. Um, Christine suggested something like imprint, and I looked into it, and it looks like a street print, uh, which is a very similar kind of um, application of like a stamped asphalt with some color on it, made to look sort of like a brick crossing. You're probably familiar with it. Um, downtown Boston has it, it uses it for crosswalks. Um, and it, that, so that's what we're suggesting, in the same shape that we've had before, in that broad, angled, almost triangular shape to connect the full width of the bollards all the way to the center island. Um, and we were, we were suggesting a herringbone pattern with like a border around it um, uh, following the same grades that, um, you know, so that there's flush crossings at both ends. Uh, now moving, do you want to touch yeah, on that? Yeah, why don't we, why don't we uh, stop there? Um, I, I, fine with the idea. Um, again, I've got to defer to Christine mm -hmm. just because she, this is, she lives in this world yeah, more exactly. than I do. Um, but are you satisfied with the imprint? I am. It's red, the, right? You're like using a, a red, color. Color. red brick color? I don't want to get like a garish orangey red, but we'll have to find a sample that looks um, traditional and not lurid. I think some of the colors that come out of the paints can be yeah, as pleasing as others. Yeah, the imprint is pretty good for the color. So you guys have that decided sample. on this on the street print versus. I the don't imprint. have samples yet, so I'd like to see the samples. But I thought we were suggesting street print. print excuse me. Okay, now street street print. You know the difference, right, between the two? Okay, you guys know the difference. <laughs> no, I, I did at one point. Yeah, you're going to have to. So imprint is much more expensive. It's a resin material that gets applied over top of asphalt. The asphalt can it can be like keyed into the edges. So you can cut out a little bit of asphalt and key it in and set it down. Uh, and it's a very thin section, and then it can be stamped also. So that wears at the same rate as the bituminous around it, because it's a very tough material. It almost wears slower than the bituminous around it. Street print, on the other hand, is a slurry um, that gets painted on. It's, it'll be a higher maintenance item for you. So the, they can come back in and heat up um, the asphalt again and stamp it, even though the asphalt's already there, with whatever pattern, a brick pattern, and then they come in and put the slurry down on top of that. Mm -hmm. The imprint, I think they usually put sand in the cracks also. So it's just a matter of how much use you think you're going to get there. Crosswalks, typically, imprint works better because of the truck traffic. You're probably not going to have that much traffic. We're, we're so. as you remember, it's fairly low traffic generator anyway. So the street print is um, so probably fine. I think fine. it's probably fine. I, I'll be absolutely honest, we haven't determined the exact methodology we're going to use here. I think the aesthetics is what we're trying to communicate. Sure. And that's the most important thing we're trying to address. Um, but we're not to the end of saying there's an imprint or a street print yeah. or some hybrid thereof. Um, but so we're, we're working towards that. But either one is fine. Solutions. Either one's fine. But the idea is we're going to uh, create that crosswalk experience and that entry. Yeah, I'm happy to see that back in. Good. I did have a question when I was up there about those two concrete bollards at the entrance, if those were temporary or permanent. And I think your architect came back and said they were temporary, but he didn't answer what was going to be replacing them, if anything. I or don't did think he? anything is going into my understanding. But I so there's definitely two less bollards. My, well, okay. that's what that I heard. That's right? what I saw the I now. did see that. Now. And that was new to me. Um, I think that he and the ADA consultants are still resolving some issues around the entry. So I'm not sure if about some about smaller bollards maybe go back in or not, or if the, yeah. Okay. Or so not. there might be two less bollards in the entry. If you go up there today, there's these two very yeah. hard looking concrete yeah. bollards. So I was happy to see that they were temporary. Yes. Um, and if there's two less light bollards, as long as you have enough light for safety. Which 
we feel. Yeah. With the overhang. There and are uh, kind of yeah. like under, you know, cam I'm lights. I'm sure the neighbors there. will be happy with two less lights. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, they, they didn't have lights in them at the approved, in the approved uh, drawings. Either. Oh, they, they did They were not. always going to be just unlit, same style, but unlit. Okay. Yeah, because okay. we knew that there'd be enough light under the camera. Oh, there. good. Okay. Um, any other comments about that area? On the, on the same yeah. thing, good. Okay. Okay. I think the next. Thing okay. Next was exhaust. Yeah. exhaust. So in the rear, we have a great number more shrubs proposed at the top of the slope than were shown in the approved drawings. Um, in addition to that, because of this generator exhaust near the top of the slope, <coughs> Christine and I talked about well, let's paint it a, a dark green to match whatever ev color evergreen trees ends up there, and what we have proposed there are. Um, a green giant arbor vitae. Um, and we also spoke about creating some layering. So it's, uh, and we had you know, right now, or what we had shown a couple weeks ago, were evergreen trees, some mugo pines, and some more evergreen trees to create some layering effect. And we talked about maybe adding some more ornamental grasses at the top to add a third layer of interest. Um, and that's what's shown on the plan now is 17 uh, panicum or switchgrass at the top to create a little bit, you know, one more level of layering in that zone. It doesn't really have so much to do with hiding the exhaust, but um, it's just at the top of the slope there because of our dis Christine's and my discussion a week ago. They may be hard to see on the plan there. Yeah, yeah, by 17, really it's really that. hard to see. Um, there's like seven here, seven here, seven here. Like okay. Great. It looks like you have a white pine and a uh, dark green arbor vitae there. Uh, one on either side. Yeah, which yeah. is good, because that'll yeah. help also. Mix it up a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, we can move on to the... Well, yeah. or, oh, yeah. Yeah. Questions around that. Uh, how tall are the Arbor Vitae Green Giant, is it? So green Giant. Uh, how do, at maturity, how tall are they going to be? Uh, they can get very large, like a white pine, practically. Um, mm -hmm. 40, 50 feet. Okay, so that's... Um, it looks like the exhaust is probably about 15 <coughs> feet tall. Is that, uh, I don't so think so. I think no? it's more like eight yeah, or something. Mm -hmm. Eight? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. feels like yeah. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. So it's sort of standing out by from itself. Now, I mean, century right now, yeah, by itself feels. right now with all the, the rock all behind it. Um, and does anything happen to the grading, or is what we're seeing out there right now with respect to the, to the, the rock slope, is that pretty much how it's going to look? The slope itself has the earth blanket, compost, mulch mixture applied, yeah. but the seed mix hasn't been applied, okay. so the plantings will grow into that. Okay. At the top of the slope, there'll need to be added planting mix. I don't believe there's planting mix. I, hasn't, I haven't gotten the, mm -hmm. the submittal on that yet. It should be coming um, to approve, and then they'll place uh, planting mix for the lawn and the shrub beds and okay. the trees. trees. I, I'm just trying to get a, a, a feel for what you observe at the site right now, where I, I think it's there's like a little pit that's sort of dug out around the exhaust pipe. Mm -hmm. um, does that get filled in more to sort of uh, offset the, the, yes. the height, height of, the, of the pipe? I do believe it does get filled in at the base there. Okay. All right. And then aside from that, what Patrick is saying is we'll have a mix that's coming up through there as well. And so right. we'll break up that okay. visual on the base and then the, the trees now provide that around it. Okay. How many arbor? Uh, Arbor Vitae are going to be planted there? Uh, well, there's one right next to the pipe. Okay. Um, and there's, well, a total of two right here. There's, okay, three white pine, two Arbor Vitae, three more white pine, mm -hmm. and then there's a smattering over around the uh, retaining wall. Okay. Katja, you also said you're going to be out there to field locate. Yes. I want to approve. When, once things have arrived, I want to make sure they're all in good condition, and then once they're uh, laid out, I want to make sure they're in the right spots. Probably before they dig the holes, because they don't have to dig the holes twice. <laughs> Maybe it probably stake them in with a uh, stake them with uh, you know the annotations. I can tell where they intend to put things, and I can tell if that's the right spot for right. buffering and screening. So you can make sure you maximize yeah. the screening as seems, much as possible. Seems like from down here, it's the most concerned the view from coming up summer. I mean, Sims. I think so. Yeah. I think even the view off of Summer Street was mentioned. From here? Yeah. yeah, depending on the location, I don't think we can get a tree in front, yeah. and like on the slope side of That's the, where the color is. Yeah. yeah, the color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Hopefully it'll look like another tree trunk. Okay. Yeah, right now it's got that really metallic yes. aluminum around it, so it's very mm -hmm. reflective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you be able to leave this with the boards? Sure. Okay. <coughs> Unfortunately, this, some of this didn't get printed out. There's, like a, there's something missing here. Okay. Maybe just get confused with something else. <coughs> You can't plant on the rock slope, right? Not larger items. Uh, we're just planting grass. the seed mix, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. At this point, anyway, yeah. Do you think you filled in as much as you can around it so that it will kind of hide the appearance of the pipe? I think we'll uh, we'll we'll take the plantings we have here and do what we can to maximize the screening from those locations. Um, <coughs> I don't think we can change the slope any to be able to plant in front of that anymore. Carol, anything else? No. Okay. So our last um, couple of items had to do with the van parking over here and snow storage in general. At the van parking spot, um, there had been uh, nine Messer of Holly proposed along the parking space and this one street tree next to the parking space. Um, there's an existing street light next to the sidewalk, which apparently reflects light off the top of the van, because it has a white, you know, it's a white top van, the van is white, uh, and it um, shines into the neighbor's houses. So what we've done is replace those um, nine uh, Messer Poly with three more Arborvitae. And it's gonna be a little bit of a squeeze, but in addition to the little leaf linden, I think the combination of all of that vegetation should help reduce that reflective light coming off the top of the van. Um, and as far as snow storage, we have increased a little bit the capability for snow storage here. And we've been talking about the idea that in the, in the winter when there is a large storm event, these parking spaces might be used as snow storage. Um, okay. On the snow storage part, I'll let others ask, but um, I guess I'd want to see on the plan that you put snow storage on the plan, where it okay. is that you're going to, uh, where does you want to put it? No, yeah. I understand, but I want it on the plan. Oh, okay. I want it from them on the plan, so that way, later on, if we approve it, okay. we've got it on the, you know, the plan. Because it's got it here. Or it does have it. snow storage going here. In the here, plant there, beds, yeah. There. Yeah, in the plant and beds, though. And, and we can enhance it. But, but they're the talking about going in here, right? Right, but they're talking about using that. Oh, that. There's this. The arrows yeah, coming in here. Yeah. There's three landscape We'll also areas. look at a smaller plant and what's up there, but yeah. Oh, oh but you're talking about <coughs> the tiny that storage that areas. Exactly, tiny right. storage, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No mm -hmm. tiny storage areas, right? Because yeah. what we lost is we lost some over here when this right. got cut back. We lost this over here when that got cut back. Right. Right. So I think, uh, well, let me, I'll let, I'll let you folks ask questions too. Oh, but nope, I mean, nope, nope, nope. For me, uh, whatever your plan is on snow storage, I'd, I'd like to see it on the plan so that way we have it yeah. as, you know, part of everything that we do here. You know, we want to be approved. Yeah, we want to be yeah. approved gotcha. to be exactly what it is. So, um, but I'll leave it to Bruce. Any other questions no. on that? Christine? No, I think that's good. I'm a little concerned that those trees aren't so tight together, but. Yeah, I'm trying to do the best we can. Yeah. Sweden, yeah. Hopefully they'll all survive. <laughs> and compete with each other. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew and Andy? No, I think I'm fine. Where explain to me about the top of the van. I'm not mm -hmm. understanding that. So uh, well from what I've heard, there's this there's a overhead street light. Yeah. That's um, directing light on the sidewalk and street. Yeah. Also, which also reflects light back over these parking spaces. Right. And it's apparently, from what I've heard, reflecting off the van, which is parked here oh, overnight. Please. Roof off of the, the roof van. of the van. And that, that roof is visible by, oh, for people way up on the hill. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the center. Oh, uh, here yeah. somewhere. Okay. On the gravel. What about the lights of those vans? Is that an issue that we've been getting comments on or not? 
The lights facing the headlights. The left, yeah. Facing this way? Yeah. Has that been an issue or no? Uh, I haven't heard that. Uh, maybe it no, is. The van, so the van is backed into that space, oh, Andrew, oh, okay. and then shining up into the rock wall. Yeah, the lower part. So okay, I think so those lights aren't that's issue. not the issue. It's it's the fact that there is some light that is shining down on a on a stark vehicle, and either reflective or just feels bright um, to the homes on Brattle. And so what we're trying to do is shield that a little bit as you come up um, with the Arbor Viaduct. And then I had two other suggestions that might help. One is to put a darker matte color on the roof of the van, all right? And just because I think <coughs> just a dark color will absorb the artificial light that's coming through there. The other thing um, you know, we'd have to ask Jake about is can, you know, we put shields on the back. This is the light that's coming up, um, up the street right. uh, sidewalk. Yep. And so we could shield on both sides, not just shielding on the side of uh, the light that's dispersed towards Brattle, mm -hmm. but also the light that comes towards our building and be very directed down at the sidewalk. So the dispersion of light over that van is also somewhat reduced. Mm -hmm. That's another suggestion. We'd have to get their approval to do that. You'd have to opine that that makes sense as well. I think we would be fine doing that and then that, those two ways could help reduce the amount of impact from that vehicle's, whatever light is, is affected, impacted by the vehicle being there. Mm -hmm. okay. I like those two solutions more than the Arbor Vitae's, actually. <laughs> I can't quite figure out how they stop the light from hitting the top. I, it I, sounds good to, to buffer it. Mm -hmm. this, this top is the one I'm talking about. That's the okay, space. That. I came in from these now. It's the van isn't in the space in that picture, but that's where the van would be, and that's the light that's shining down in that space. If it's not felt that they're helpful, I would also prefer to not have yeah, if you're gonna, trees there. Yeah, if you're going to paint the top of the van dark, mm -hmm. and if Jake thinks a shield could be put on that other light and that could help reduce it, you can always come back in and put the Arborvites if those two solutions aren't working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say the Arborvites should be the last Why? solution there. Too crammed in. It's just too crammed. Yeah, and I know you're trying to get the tallest thing in there you can, mm, right? Because again, and you don't really want to lose a street tree in there. What would you put there instead? It's not. I mean, if you're going to do it with vegetation, there's really not that many other choices. But you want to screen the van if it's going to sit there, or any other vehicle that will end up sitting there, because that's the thing you see when you come up the hill. Well, before there were lower um, yeah, sure reserve just hollies, which get to be, they can be four, eight five, feet. Four, five, six, they could get bigger, but yeah, they could get up to eight feet tall. So those would have helped shield it when you're coming up the hill. That would have blocked Not the majority of the view. Of course, but just to create the buffer and breaking it up a little bit. That was our original intention. I mean, it'd be nice if it was high enough to, so you don't see the van parked there all the time. It's the first thing you see. <laughs> These trees to the transformer to the side, and downhill side, yeah. uh, well, as you also, come up. Are, are still planned to be there, and they're taller. You know, they're the, uh, they're, they're yeah, the those are the and oh, um, Norway spruce, which are also large, evergreen, you know, full down to the ground kind of like a Christmas screening. tree. So these are still in the plan. These are the ones in question. The three right alongside. I'm just wondering about really getting a better screen on the side of that, so you don't see right into it all the time. I mean, an architectural screen versus Maybe a vegetative? Something that... I think that's a lot of plantings, yeah, and those is. are all evergreens. But, but you said you want to take them out. Well, yeah, the ones, the ones the on the side, I think if, if we kept the hollies instead of putting in the tall ones, she's changed those to the very tall arborvitaes. You know the tall, thin yep, arborvitaes yep, yep, yep. that are dark? They're in other parts of the site, actually. When you go up the hill, there's a whole row right. um, <coughs> by the guardrail up there. So. They're probably never going to get to be 45 feet tall. But they need to uh, be. But they would help. Be nice if they were 10 feet so they could. Block yeah, they'll, they'll certainly get to be 10 feet tall, and that'll help. I think the neighbor was seeing it from her window up a you little don't higher. Want to see the van at all. She was seeing the reflection well, looking down. Why, why not put those trees right alongside there so you don't see it? Yeah, the arbor lighting. Uh, which ones? The arbor lighting? 
Now I'm trying to figure out whether you want the holly or the arbor. Line. I want the one that's like you ten want the feet, tall one. That you can, ten feet tall. The problem Eventually. is you're going to have these three ten feet tall evergreens, oh, and then okay. you're going to have a street tree right on what top of them. What about a plant that just kind of fills in, like maybe it's the holly, I don't know, something that just makes a nice visual screen there so you don't see the van? That was the holly. Yeah, I think that's what we had before. <laughs> but that's not helping you with the... Uh, no, the light but that's, issue. But if the, the light is shielded and the van is painted, right. then yeah. so, so you do all three. Yeah, the the hollies. I think we're going to work better for that. Preference. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like I'd like to know that the shields are kind of permanent and mm -hmm. they work. They don't get beat up, and we should be we should make sure that they actually achieve what we're asking them. And to I would achieve. start with substantial sized hollies then, if we're hopeful that they're going to have some impact. Mm -hmm. <coughs> We have a, a 24 to 30 inch height um, for those. Oh, no, oh, yeah, that's the same one. It'd be nice to see yeah. something larger than that. Okay. Yeah, bump sure. that up to the next size at least. Okay. If you get too large, then they don't take the. Right. David, would the dark mat on the rooftop be permanent? Oh, no, for that vehicle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at some point, vehicles do need to be replaced, so would the replacement vehicle also have the we same thing? We'd have that as a requirement. Well, what's the van for? Is it just transportation? For the residents, yeah. So it's your van. Right. So you can achieve that. It's not going to be somebody other other van pulling in that's right. got a big bullseye on it that says Acme Moving <laughs> Company. <laughs> but the point is, yeah, I think <coughs> we, we put the mat on once, yep. and then five, seven years from now we get another van, we'd be glad to have that as a requirement. That the next one dark blue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole van. Oh, the white van. Mm -hmm. You can paint the van darker color. A darker color. Yeah. Well, we have certain standards, so I can't speak for everything we do. But well, we're going to look at that logo. you got a nice blue, dark blue. <laughs> <laughs> but it still would need a matte finish, so I think the matte finish is more uh, important than the matte finish. It's like a non reflective It's not it's glossy, kind of, uh, and, and then on top of that being gulk, uh, a darker color, which absorbs the light, yeah. as opposed to being a little more garish than it is today. Yeah, dark and matte is what you want. Um, the rest of it doesn't matter. So. Well, I think the side of it too, does too. You don't want the thing just sure. getting hit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so with respect to the screening for the, uh, for the street light, um, we would need to get the approval of of uh, the Sims 360 because that's on it's what a, a shared responsibility or well, is it on my impression the, on think. their on their land? It's yes, I mean it's it's an easement that we share with them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who would grant that approval to put the shields up. Jay, do you have <coughs> any quick response to what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I think that I don't want to push you in. A, <laughs> The concerns, I think, would just be safety yeah. um, with the coverage of the candle lights, with the engineering of the whole road and liability. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think that's the primary. And then I think the, the other is just appearance of how it looks, you know, presentation lines coming up the road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with double shades, you're really altering those lights pretty significantly. We talked about so, um, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody should just be, you know, aware of all of the, the impacts. You can check though for that one light. Well, you know, it's the, those lights aren't aren't going to be functioning the way that they were designed to, and you know, nobody likes to think of a downside scenario, and it may be unlikely to happen. But if there was a life safety issue of any kind there, you know, who's liable for it? Mm -hmm. And that's what's led to a lot of hesitancy, I think, within our partnership group of altering the design that was approved and engineered and that there's um, affidavits that have been signed that it's been constructed per plan. Um, those are issues. Those are legal issues. And so when we're when people are altering those plans, they're assuming the liability for that too. Um, so um, you know, we we do manage that together as part of the, the, the overall governance. And there's costs that are shared back and forth, um, and that's outlined. So it's not a simple, you know, it, sometimes the simple solutions can have impacts that aren't anticipated down the road. So, David, what I'm hearing is that um, 
from that top to the van. Um, right now it's looking like Holly, but if the shield doesn't come onto that light, maybe you've got a different answer on that, Christine. Mm. Okay? And I think we need an answer on the shield. Okay? So I think that's that's what I was hearing on, on that particular uh, piece of the equation. preference is to try and retain the parking space up there. Just programmatic for the residents, for staff, for the guests. We have a limited amount of space up there as it is right now. Um, so my hope was to try and find a solution that mitigated some of the concerns uh, of the lighting uh, of the parked car, etc. in that space. And hopeful that the rhododendrons were planted plus the uh, enhanced uh, evergreens down below as you go down the hill on the other side of our entry could mitigate that. Um, and then in the winter, when we have a snow event, that becomes a storage area. So we immediately would lose that space when we need to store snow. But at least we wouldn't lose it all year long. Mm -hmm. um, that was my objective. If that meets with the board's approval, I'd, I'd like that to be the recommendation. So I wanted to get some feedback uh, from you and um, and see if that met the concerns that you're hearing about, or the concerns you individually have. So. Bruce, I have uh, some problems with it, to be honest, David. Okay. Um, I uh, have been up to the site and looked at what I think are the the lines of the headlights, and it really does look like it's going to uh, impact the butter uh, at, on, at 121 Brattle. Um, so, and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear about the possible mitigation strategies, but I'm, I'm just concerned that, you know, it's it's really, it, it, and they, they might address the problem, but I'm not really convinced of that. And I think it's just, since it's a departure from the plan that we approved, this one I have a hard time saying is insubstantial, because I just think the impact of that falls on the abutter, and the abutter, you know, wouldn't have had a chance to object to that siting of that space, because it wasn't part it was of the original there. plan. I understand. So, um, so I guess I'm sort of, would like to hear about the other options. Yeah. And you can wait till the board goes through the other questions. Well, if everybody yeah. feels the same way as Bruce, which I appreciate that, I really do. You know, we didn't clearly didn't anticipate these issues arising. Um, yeah, for the most part, thought most of these changes were insubstantial, and and I appreciate you hearing us out on the other changes. Mm -hmm. This is a greater impact. We clearly see that. Um, the, the other solution is simply to remove it. We can do that, and I would agree to do it. Mike and I talked about that earlier, and I understand, I told Mike I appreciated his time going up there individually and spending time seeing the impact at night. Um, Tachi and I did the same thing not at night, but we see the direct impact, uh, especially to the one neighbor. Um, it's a little hard because we don't have the landscaping installed yet, mm -hmm. and it's, it's helpful to have that additional parking space. But if we also want to get to the end, you know, and we want to be, yes. we want, look, I, I hope the sense is we're doing everything we can to mitigate some of these concerns. We're trying to be thoughtful and creative in the changes. I hope you've seen that in the other things we're doing. Um, if you feel strongly about it, we will remove that spot. I just wanted to be thoughtful about the fact that there's some utilitarian aspects of it, and I think we can accomplish both, but I, I appreciate um, the concern that what if we can't 
and then we've got an approval, and we don't know if we're going to come back and make amends to improve later. So um, hopefully you've gotten a sense of who we are through this process over the last couple of years, and we are good to the word we have, and we're excited about being uh, a part of the community. So we want to be off in the right foot as well. So if, if everyone feels strongly about it, I'd be glad to remove the space. I just wanted you to hear our perspective on it. I still think that it might be possible to put some type of panel there, right right across that front area. You may have to put a wheel stop so the cars don't get all the way up to it. I mean, it could be some type of very attractive lattice that a vertical green could grow up on. Could grow up on it. I'd be more, yeah. I, if, if you could accomplish something like that, which, which I think is doable, yeah. you know, a combination of... of a fence panel so similar to your powerful. fence above mm -hmm. that has an evergreen. But tying in not much the evergreen vine out there. There are in, in the, there are no evergreen vines that I know of. <laughs> Baltagon is the closest mm -hmm. you can get and they wouldn't really grow up in metal picket fence and I'm a little of the mind that the aesthetic of adding a wood panel with all the other materials that is there is not going to be as uh, as nice as just simply an evergreen shrub that fills in and yeah. spills over whatever it can. I mean, if the evergreen shrubs can be planted, if you can put one on both sides of the light yeah, there's post room on that one's other side, and so get them the to problem. grow mm -hmm. on both sides of it, then there's still a hope that you could do it with just the plants. Yeah, before we delve any deeper, maybe we can mm -hmm. hear from Andrew and Andy on it. I think I tend to agree with Bruce. I think it's a fairly substantial change in the impact on the abutter. I don't know that shrubbery is, it, shrubbery is going to solve that. I think if lights are on, lights are on, we're going to be shining into that property. Andy? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a fix that's not really making anybody very happy. I mean, even you internally, the wall might stop the light, but then you guys have to deal with a pretty it's, it looks like you're fixing a, mm -hmm. a problem. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's right. that would just not. So yeah. I would, I, would yeah. I really think you know you might need to, you need to lose that spot and, and landscape it in. Um, unless you can show a beautiful solution that blocks the light and mm -hmm. you feel comfortable with along the lines of a wall. See, if you had it to do now, you could have built the wall around mm -hmm. and wrapped it along. And designed it with, and the lights would be on top of the wall and all this stuff that you can't do now. So you really got it's a, it's a messy little corner. The other option is to back it up and leave yeah. enough room for plants. But but I think the real issue is, and what I'm hearing from the board as well, is that is that anything you would do, right. you would have to do, and then we'd have to take a look at right. it, and then you might still be in the same spot, which is mm -hmm. the majority of the board saying, not enough. So you know, I I'm in agreement with Bruce's mm -hmm. take on it. Um, and I do think that, you know, if this had come before us before, maybe we could have considered some of these things. Mm -hmm. But given where we are in the process, I think I think it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I didn't mean to cut you off here. No, so, no, no. So, um, but uh, I was just reaffirming like, right. what you said, which is I think the problem you have is if you, you could try a bunch of these things and we still don't know. Mm, and I know I'm probably more in that camp than anything else. I know, yeah, so, you've been quite yeah. with me, so. So I'm, if, if that would make everybody happy, we'd be glad to take that parking space out. Um, uh, I actually had Katja um, design something if we had to get there. So if you want to take a quick look sure. at what that means. That sounds great. Um, if we get that approved, then we can take that issue on the table. And is showing all five of the crab apple back as uh, for the approved plan and additional snow storage would be available in mm -hmm. that same spot we've spoken of um, and a couple more I had added a couple more um, 
Anthony Water Spirea because there's that much more room and that's simple as that. Why does that look nice? <laughs> Goes well, back to the beginning. Yeah. I think in, in the end, in the end, we acknowledge um, we, we want that to be an inviting role as well. And starting to the wall um, was apparent to us mm. as well. So while I, I'm trying to balance the utilitarian mm -hmm. aspects yep, yep. of it, and I appreciate no, you no, listening to appreciate it. You, thank you too. Um, I think in the end, uh, this will be a nice result as well. Um, <coughs> so, I actually just had a question because I do know that because the wall moved in, yeah. you still have enough room for uh, the different crab apples, which is good. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how many sucks. I guess I was. Well, you, you have, it's tighter, but there's still. Yeah, I was a little fearful yeah. that that wouldn't be the case, so that's great. Okay. So, and do we denote the storage area? I did point to it on the left side where that parking space is on this plan. But is there a note on the plan? On this plan, there is. There is. Okay, great. Yep. So then maybe that. Yep. Um, ties that together. Which I think it does. So if that makes it with your approval, we submit this plan um, okay. for approval. Okay. Um, I think that addresses I think so. all the five items we started out the discussion here tonight. Okay. So it would be this plan for approval but without the Arbor Vidi near the band parking space going back to the, to the Holly. Right. The high, high the, Holly. The, the one question I have for the board on that particular item is, I mean, by board I probably mean Christine more than anybody else, the board is if the shield doesn't happen on that light for whatever reason, which tree is better? Because I think we have to give instructions with respect to that in, in, in the event that that doesn't happen. Well, I haven't been out there to look from the house windows. Okay. Well, I'm assuming the arbor buddies would work better to block the light bouncing off the top of the van. Once the van is painted black or painted dark with a matte finish, I don't believe the light's going to be as much of an issue. Okay. So I would go back to the. You'd roll the dice on the holly. To the almost. yeah, to the size holly that would block the side views of the van. Okay. And still work underneath the tree. That would be my preference. Then, um, then that is what Bruce said, which is it's this plan with the uh, Arbor Vidi being removed. removed. Yeah, I'm sorry, being removed. And the going, and back to the going back to the island. Island. Yes, what she said. Yeah, what she <laughs> said, one bigger than what you had. Yep. That's right. Catching is what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certainly I don't. <laughs> Carol? Perhaps the um, plan can be noted. Yeah. Notated before the end of the meeting so that we could have that in the file. That would be great. <laughs> I took a bite draw right <laughs> And the, uh, the same landscape applies around the, uh, the exhaust. Exhaust, exhaust. yep. So that would be an up to date. And, that, and that's shown on this plan too, yeah, for that. Right. 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 Okay. Perfect. That's not really uh, anything on those changes. Not, so, not on the ones we have. Not on the ones before us. Okay. No. The one is kind of decided because uh, that was a that was a change that was presented to us at the last meeting, and the fact that it's not complete. If you, if you want to ask a question on it, that's your. Part. There was a question that has come up, and I haven't seen it personally myself but on the siding around. Uh, it would be the east side, I think, of the building. Um, to the right. That it didn't uh, appear that the siding right. was finished, the top right, and from the lower Vista Park, you get a very clear view of the siding. I think it's that retaining wall that goes now instead of being mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in that area. Down, down. Yes, that. I and I didn't print out the picture. Um, but you can see oh, the concrete that. foundation hmm. versus siding, okay. as though the siding weren't completed. Uh -huh. If you could check into that, maybe, and get back to the board. Unfortunately, I don't have. Um, I can and I haven't seen it myself, it. but that seemed to be a concern. So, I did take a look at that, though. Yeah, did you? Was that? 
it's not really in public view. Yeah. Um, you have to begin to sort of walk down from the lower vista part. So where the um, where the, where where the crest of the hill is uh, before it flattens out for the lower vista part, you have to actually begin to go down the slope before that foundation wall comes into view. Mm. So uh, it didn't seem to me like it was. Well, with the conservation easement being right there and mm -hmm. not knowing where public trails are going to be built in the future, mm -hmm. there could be a trail that comes up oh, that's true. right alongside of there, actually. The old access road is there for utility work. And I know they're, they're not going to restore that with plants, so that's going to be a very open yeah. pathway up there also. I would agree with the sort of the overall view on that, though, is it does look a little unfinished. I mean, it looks like it's just like, okay, we just decided to stop here. Yeah, I wonder, again, I haven't seen it myself, mm -hmm. um, is, it, uh, is it due to a condition where you, you, know, you can't have the siding that close to the ground? I wonder Maybe. if there's a maintenance issue mm -hmm. associated with it as opposed to an unfinished condition. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing I can't comment on is we may not yeah. be able to do anything about that condition. Is it on the wall, the wing wall? I don't know where it is. It's on the building. It's on the, yeah. on the building, not on the wing wall. Yeah. <coughs> I can oh, point out. On the, right here? Yeah, yeah, if I can point oh, out okay. where it is. Yeah, you, it's right about there. And going a little farther towards the, in the oh, northerly yeah. direction. Yeah, I couldn't tell on this picture where it was. Yeah. It's, is it's, it right it's there? It's right in there. Yeah. yeah. It's this area but, right there. I'm not sure that has, I'm not sure that was one of the changes. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think it was. I mm -hmm. brought that. I brought that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fine. Nice. I think I have it here. So that, that's my only only comment about it is I just don't know. Is there no vegetation that will go there? No, that's no, not It's in the middle of the next season. It's okay, so fresh. Yeah, so some will there come could up. Be some, um, there could be some height there, two feet. Or so. Probably probably so that should be one of these sections, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is where the patio was added and the wall is back here. Mm -hmm. It may be this section right here. Yeah. Down at the bottom of the wall? Yeah. At the top of the wall. It's probably up at the top of the wall. Right here. Uh, where did it step up? You were just pointing to the stuff. Yeah, well, this is, this is the wall, yeah. Do so you think it's up, up in here? Yeah. Not this? Yeah, the higher no, side. Northern it's northern it's northern 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 northern. Is that what you think, Bruce? Because I think this that's part. the building. Yeah, because I think this is behind mm. where the retaining wall comes in. So the area in question is kind of behind that wall. Yeah. Mm. And from the right angle looking down, you can get a glimpse of it, but it's, it's not shouting at you. It's not shouting mm. at you. Right. I think it might be as built. I mean, yeah. as designed. Yeah. I mean, moreover. I think that's how it was designed. Mm -hmm. In the original plan. In the original plan. Yeah, yeah I'm just bringing it up because it was brought up to our sure, I appreciate that. My, my sense is that's a condition that can't be altered relative to uh, the connection with the grade. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I, you may actually. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's it. Um, I, I, guess, I guess you're hearing the concern of the board, and maybe if you could. We can look into it, absolutely, and just yes. respond. I think we can all know what. That would be great. I learned about it. Yeah, maybe it's a screen. Yeah, I, okay. Because I don't think that was part of the requests. I think we can move the mm. requests um, mm. from last week. Yeah, that wasn't on that elevation. Yeah, exactly, it wasn't on that elevation. I think that's you know. So we'd love to I'll understand that it. and yeah. look into it. That See would be great. A solution that makes uh, e exactly. aesthetics more pleasing. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that would be great. Knowing that you know people hopefully will be walking. You know, using that yeah. conservation land. Um, so, so I think what we have before us are the the elevations from two weeks ago. The uh, new elevations from two weeks ago. The new sides. Um, I don't think we made any changes to any of these elevations. These go out. These are no longer relevant. Um, but the signages, the new signs are relevant. And each of these elevations is relevant, as well as that plan with, as notated, um, the 
uh, Hollies <coughs> coming back into play instead of the uh, Arbor Beat. So I think I will uh, entertain a motion, uh, if that makes sense, uh, to approve the elevations uh, from two weeks ago, along with the same <coughs> reports from two weeks ago, uh, with the plan as uh, amended and presented. Uh, yes. I would add just to that the condition that the van uh, have a yes. matte finish on the top with a absorbent color, black or some other close dark, dark, blue? dark <coughs> navy <coughs> would wear, yeah, something like that. Um, so is that, that, is, is that a motion? What about the shields? Yeah. Oh. Be investigated. They should be investigated. Um, it is desirable, but um, but that's not going to work for a vote. Um, uh. um, I'm trying to think of the best way. Any, any thoughts on that? I'm not sure. How we do that? You can't put a condition to consider <coughs> something. Is it not? not without an engineer's report. Or well, that an engine uh, that the engineers take a look at it, and if possible, that it be accomplished. And if it's not possible, then we'll have to live with the the mat roof and the shrubs. I guess what we could add is that um, with the applicant uh, undertaking additional mitigation in the event that the reflection from the yeah. van continues, continues to be problematic. I, that's me, yeah, that but is, I, I'm trying to get a little bit more, uh, you know, fine-tune that a little bit more for you, um, Again, you I just think it's investigation of street light. Yeah, it's just that enforcing wise we can't. Really no, we can't do it, it if it's yeah. not allowed and it's not. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that 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 was sought that 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 was uh, you know dissolved whether it's impossible to do or not. I'm not sure. That wasn't one of our initial issues either when they first That's came correct. before us. So can't we treat that the same way as we're yeah, treating? Yeah, I, I think I think let's do it that way for now. Yep. So the same as we're treating the headlights, or the, the, um, the no the um yeah the wall foundation the foundation wall, wall. that it be investigated. Well, that's the edit. So yeah, so that's not going to be part of the vote. Right. right. That but came you, later. you are hearing, and I think it will do everyone a world of good if you could figure that out. But, but the, okay, so the van top. The van top, however. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll put that in since we'll that's decided. In, since, since that's easy enough to do. Okay, so. I think, Carol? You Would you mind just telling me the date sure. of the pro-con plans yep. that you reviewed two weeks ago, please? Yeah, I think these are the right ones. 310. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, three, so it's, it's, I, this one's got, you want the date? Yeah, this one's got uh, 226 on the sign. Uh, I'm going kind of backwards here. You don't want to use the 310 packet? Yeah, this, it was, this was part of the 310 packet, Yeah. but the sign was the 226 one. So it is the 310 packet. Yeah, I think everything else is dated 310. It's just that one that is, oh no, it says 310 on the top. I'm sorry. It is, it's the 310 yeah, they packet. 310, 14, sorry. Yeah, but we're excluding a couple of them. Exa exactly, excluding Replacing. page number uh, five and Six. And, and including yeah, and site including plan that. dated, and you have to give her the name. What's called a planting plan? Planting plan L5.0. Oh, yeah, for revision um, 7. 324, 2014. Christine, can you pass this? And as annotated, mm -hmm. can you annotate it? As annotated, yes. Tonight. Tonight. And as annotated, will be April 1st yet? Uh, March no, 31st. Still March 31st. No, still March. <laughs> As annotated, <laughs> March 31st. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go over there. You said three seven? Yes. Yeah. Okay. March 31st, by right here. Or well, by you, whatever your official title. Okay. I tried. 
And we got the <laughs> art condition in there about the, the mad the mat. Yes. The dark mat. Do we want to enter this top with a dark color no? through? I don't think so because that's not what we want. Well, part of it is this This is still valid. So, but I don't know if we need. Oh, yeah, that's. This is yeah, still valid, the planting that was. Okay. That's an additional detail. <laughs> Oh, you know, and you this will just be page? this will just be a little bit more robust. We'll have more trees in here. We'll two no, more trees. Because it shows the parking spots. I don't like that. Okay. Yeah, so you may want to just go just to the, the, last uh, the section. So we'll just use the proposed yeah. planting and rip it off the retaining section. Yep. Or I'll rip mine off. So the retaining section. Okay. Sorry, she got mine. Oh, you, you got it, Karen? Yeah. I want to keep them. That's fine. I know. Okay. Hopefully, we'll wait for Carol to catch up again. So we have a, hopefully a motion. <laughs> yeah. Or a motion to make it, I should say. Someone to say so moved. So moved. Don't you want, you don't want to it back or you like but you made the motion. Oh, I, I did make the motion. Okay. Yeah, I guess, well, I was adding the condition. But. Oh, so you can so move. Yeah. I'll second. You, okay. want it, you don't want this read back so you can hear what. <coughs> Go for it, Carol. I, I'd like to hear it back. Just yeah. To make sure the uh, dates are in there. <coughs> okay, you got to wait one minute then. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not to put you on the spot. I bet everybody out there doesn't want to hear it back. <laughs> Those are some people. <laughs> Mr. Fitzsimmons moved to approve the elevation drawings dated March 10, 2014, excluding pages 5 and 6 including the revised L.5 plan, revised re revision 7, as notated March 31st, 2014, by Katya Poziadlo for Brightview, <coughs> and with the condition that the van roof be a matte top with dark colored roof and for the planting section, this is going to have to all be reordered, and for the planting section shown on page dated March 31st, 2014, um, prepared by Blair Hines Design. God forbid anyone has to follow I, uh, this I, later. I, you, you do need to add one thing, I'm sorry Carol, to, uh, but okay. uh, with reference to the planting plan L5.0, Substituting out the Arbor Vitae and she annotated. Oh, it's that. annotated. That's the annotation. That's the annotation. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, that's the annotation. So I sorry. Yeah. yeah, you just put the section with the plan, and then right. That last then. section is being replaced, just like the plan is, or being included. 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 Yeah. Yeah, she said included. Yeah. Just the order. Yeah. Does that make sense, order. Andy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it all. Yeah, and we'll order. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll reorder. Is that a, Thank you. Is someone moved? I moved it. All right. I second that. I already second. Too late. Okay. You can <laughs> vote though. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can third it. <laughs> I can rescind okay. the second if you really want to second. Carol, did you get that uh, with uh, Bruce moving and Christine seconding? Thank you. No, no problem. Christine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you did a very nice job. Thank you. Let okay, <laughs> we're well behind schedule at this point, so Thank hopefully you. we'll uh, move it along. Uh, Go to invite uh, the uh, Scott Smith from uh, Transportation Advisory Committee. Sorry for the delay. Well, I can never make it up on. Thank you.
Advisory Committee, who's also part of our working group, uh, consisting of Jeff Next, other members, including Jeff Next Studios, Wayne Schoenard, town engineer, Torrid News, Laura Wiener, uh, Christopher Tonkin, uh, a bunch of them that are another big tech tonight. <laughs> so, um, if we just quickly review this. Yeah, so, if you don't mind. Sure. You don't have to we read have it to. or anything, but if you no, could sure. give us the, okay. the bullets. So, at a uh, Redevelopment Board meeting, which I was unable to attend, uh, February 3rd, uh, we asked to solicit the feasibility of a chicane. That's like a little bend in the road. I don't want to close this example we know about. It's on the Blanchard Road, which turns into Brighton Street in Belmont. Right, right. Yeah, that little bend yeah. in the road. That's a chicane. Um, and, and so we did. So the working group got together at the end of February. Uh, dug up some guidelines from Ashto and uh, came up with some concepts for the design of a little bend on the approach at Earl Street on the bike path. At, so we presented two options at Transportation Advisory Committee's regular meeting on March 12th. Uh, concerns were raised, I think a lot of them about the available right-of-way room, which is pretty limited, and also about the potential for increased bicycle pedestrian conflicts, because just because you paint a bend in the road doesn't mean people are going to follow it. Uh, and TAC unanimously recommended not to go forward with the chicane option, not to recommend the chicane <coughs> the Um so we went back. Uh, then uh, Wayne, town engineer, uh, did some more research and identified a split entry design where kind of some of the functions basically the east this half splits into two one way segments. Uh, and so you have like a little island near the intersection which serves two purposes. One is each, each half is too narrow for a car to get down. And it also really lets the path users know, hey, there's an intersection here. And the local example on that is on the uh, new path that go, going from Alewife towards Belmont, okay. where it gets uh, Brighton Street, um, right, by the, right, right by the tracks here. It runs okay. alongside the tracks on the Pittsburgh line. Huh. I know what yeah. you mean. I yeah, just yeah well, we, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, <coughs> and then, but then we took another look at it and said, well, there's absolutely no room to do this on the east side because you got a road on one side and a fire hydrant on another. Uh, and if you did it on one side, it means you're crossing Mill Street at a kind of crazy angle, which isn't desirable either. Uh, <coughs> so after that, we went to Wayne, modified the design, which is in your report. It's basically upgrade the flashing beacon so it works reliably. If, uh, Basically, I think it's getting far more use than the initial design ever contemplated. Uh, replace the sidewalk with a concrete sidewalk that meets ADA requirements and is also highly visible. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of signs and paint as being what would be practical there. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, we took advantage of the regularly scheduled meeting of the bike committee and this had just been come out, this was on the 19th, and uh, Bike Committee unanimously voted to support uh, Wayne's design, DPW's design. Uh, TAC has not had a chance to meet as a whole, the you know, working group supports this. <coughs> um, okay. So. I have just one question, Scott. Yeah. Um, um, and first, I want to thank you for, and your committee for all the work they've done. You guys do great work, and it's incredibly helpful for us. Um, on the scheme, sure. um, 
I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it looks like this bike zing here, you're saying, take that out. You're saying no bike crossing marks between bike path and Summer Street. And I was wondering if, is that intentional or is that? I think it maybe is there isn't enough room to have, there isn't enough space between the light. Oh. oh we could follow up with Wayne. Uh, okay. Because I, I still assume because it's just such a short distance to the light at Summer Street. They may not have much room for an advanced marking. Okay. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, it you looks like in the right. budget though you've got yeah. uh, two bike okay. crossing you know, yeah, yeah, allocations here, okay. uh, and, and I'm, I'm sure that the paint, I mean, that's yeah. not a budget buster. It's whatever. not yeah. a bu budget buster, maybe, you know, to take it back to engineering and say, hey, yeah. if you can do this, do it. Right. And if, yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's what I would be asking if it, okay. because it, it would seem to make sense, but yeah. I understand if it's just too much happening in that space between, I guess this must be Summer Street on the left edge. Yeah, that's right. The page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, um, then... I, I understand the, the reason for not putting it there, but it, it seemed strange to take it out. Okay. Uh, we'll, we can follow this point. Okay. So I had just two questions. Are you all done? I have yeah, two questions. Sure. Um, the solar panel upgrade for rectangular rapid flash beacon. So is that a new beacon and a new solar panel? Oh, I'm just curious. The, the beacon is there. It's the same beacon. <coughs> same beacon. So that's kind of the, the, but what we found is it didn't work very well, particularly in the winter. And mm -hmm. after a whole lot of diagnosis and checking, we concluded it just it need, needs more power. So it needs a bigger solar panel. Yeah. So are you getting a rebate on the old solar panels? Is it uh, the company that has to provide it, or uh, it's a this, is, this would be more a question <coughs> for me on those details. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious. I didn't yeah. see that on the cost estimate that there might be a yeah. rebate back, but uh, it may not be the fault of the provider of the beacon, the fabricator. Yeah. It's, if it's just getting more use and needs a yeah. stronger panel. Yeah. That was one question. The other question, um, I, I like the design that you guys have come up with, and I thank you for looking at the chicanes. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned that there was limited available right away. We had talked about actually approaching that owner, since this is the time, if we're ever going to do it, to gain more right of way. So I'm just curious, when yeah. TAC made a call on that, was it mostly because of the right of way or the increased potential conflict? I think increased potential was conflicts. Was it? Okay. For being, it then it's a mute point. Yeah. It's just some, some things that might work on an uncrowded path mm. would be inadvisable. At on, that particular on, point? On this path. Okay. Yeah. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. I think you guys have done a, an excellent job with this. Um, we really do appreciate all the hard work. Along with upgrading the solar panel, <coughs> is there an option? And, and I don't know anything about the beacon, so this may be yeah. a foolish question. Is there a battery in there that could be upgraded as well to increase the storage of the power? Uh, I think he, he actually mentioned that the battery that was going to be upgraded up. okay. to match that's, the panel. That's part of that's part that's of part the system. Okay. 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 Good. Good. So that's just shorthand. Yeah. Okay. okay. Upgrade for all my questions. Uh, Carol? Uh, no, I don't have questions. Thank you. Okay, I've been out there. Thank you very much for, okay. for the hard work. Appreciate it. Um, so I think if. Uh, uh, if the board is okay with uh, what's been discussed, uh, I think we should um, entertain a, a motion to accept uh, the plan dated 327-14 uh, by the uh, uh, traffic advisor. Oh, um, it's actually the DPW. Oh, it's the DPW's plan. Yeah, okay, thank Wayne, you. Wayne prepared this. Perfect. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Uh, the DPW's plan of 327-14 yeah. and the budget <coughs> uh, by the DPW yeah. as well. So moved. Uh, with the one condition to look into the paint on Mill Street South. Yeah, the no bike crossing. The no bike uh, crossing. I, I made a note of top land. Yeah, if you could, if yeah. you could do that, please. The good news is, is we've got two of them in the budget, so right, yeah. that we should be okay, okay on that front. Sure. So, um, okay, Andy moved. Second. Andrew seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You very much. Thank really you. appreciate Thank it. You. <coughs> okay. Moving right along.
So uh, next on the agenda is our Arlington 360 uh, review of matrix. Um, open item is for performance bond. And actually, this is this is going to change a little bit in that I, I'm not sure we're going to go over the matrix tonight. Um, we might go over different pieces that are open. Uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to have Jake um, uh, go over open items. Um, uh, Carol, you didn't bring your matrices, did you? Or? I did, but they're a mess because they didn't. Um Coffee properly. Yeah. Um, because yeah. adding the column. You guys I try to save paper. And then that's what happens. But, but Jake's doesn't the card show then. the items that stop. But, you know. Um, you could use those. Yeah, let's hold off. Sorry. Let's hold off. If that's okay. I'd rather have you kind of go through them verbally. Okay. If, if that's just as well. Sure. Um, I'd rather use Carol's uh, on that because those are the ones that uh, fully had uh, uh, come up with. So. Yeah. From our perspective, those are the ones of uh, record, if you want. Okay. Um, so do you want to pass those out, or do you want me just to go through the ones that... Carol, if we took three minutes and tried to collate them, would we have the ability to do sure. that? Sure, yeah. Um, um, all right, well, why don't do you want to start at yeah, the, why don't you, the LDA? Kind of what yeah, we could use that that list that you've got. No, the other one, the, the list of open. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that might be the best way to do it. So, so what it is, folks, is we, gotta, we want to go through open items. Uh, and um, certainly we want to go through like the matrix and what's what's left and, and everything else to do. Um, what we're not in a position to, to do quite yet is to talk about it in terms of this is what's left and we're uh, just in talking with the building enforcement officer um, what it is that in, in looking at the LDA <coughs> we need to be uh, probably more complete in the whole process uh, before uh, signing off on uh, for, uh, for final CMs. If you look at the LBA and the, um, the special permit, it specifically says that the Arlington Redevelopment Board needs to um, say that the project is complete before the um, building enforcement officer um, uh, issues the certificate of occupancy. Certificate of occupancy. So from that perspective, what uh, Jake's going to run us through is uh, different open items, which he worked with uh, with Laura uh, to kind of go over. Laura couldn't be here tonight, so this is uh, really staff and uh, developers working together to talk about what's what's left on the open item list. Uh, and uh, that's it. I think I've rattled okay. on enough. Yeah. So um, there's two approaches to this: is to look at the LDA requirements and then the conditions of approval, um, building up to sort of what the amounts are that we still have to do. Um, and, and then they expect to be done. Um, we were, we were, had made a big effort to try to um, get the CR, I um, made a lot of progress on, on the conservation restriction and getting all of the parties to approve it. And there's um, a lot of different legal counsels that had to kind of come into alignment. Um, I think we've made tremendous strides over the last three weeks um, mm -hmm. of really being very, very focused on it. And, um, and then we've actually gotten um, it to be approved by the Arlington Land Trust, I'm uh, sorry, the Conservation Commission, the Arlington Land Trust, um, um, the council representing the ARB, yep. um, the um, legal staff for shelter, the legal staff for shelter lender, the equity partners, the Arlington 360s, equity partners, and, and debt lender. So we've got an alignment that's, we've also negotiated that all out and gotten approval um, from the state of Mass uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, they have, um, are in the process of getting their signature. Um, they're waiting for all of the other signatures and some lien releases or some subordination agreements to be done by the lenders um, to the CR to make sure that that's all in alignment. Um, essentially, the CR is a critical point because it's required to be done at the end of the project. It encompasses a lot of different other um, open space and the, 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 the upper and lower Vista parks. Um, it, uh, it sets in motion um, a different set of governance. Um, and um, so it's a very interrelated component of the project. It also touches very closely with the neighborhood protection plan. So we've been also working closely with the neighborhood groups to have them all understand where we are and getting alignment with everybody. So we've made a lot of progress on that. We were hopeful that we would be able to have that be recorded and we could have then made some payments that are necessary under the LDA for the land trust and the 
um, SIMS endowment fund, open space endowment fund. Um, we are not quite there. We're still uh, shelters uh, hopeful to have their debt lender mm -hmm. do the subordination agreement. I think that's the last thing that we're ended. And I think they were very consumed with their presentation to you yes. tonight. So um, the, the, this is definitely on their screen, and it's important for them as well as for us um, to get it done. So we expect that by the end of this week we'll be making more progress. So hopefully we're <laughs> here with a lot of these uh, things that are still outstanding coming together very quickly and sort of checking the box, if you will. And, being done. Um, we also <coughs> have a couple of challenges um, with weather and with coordination with shelters work on kind of some of these overlapping areas. Uh, for instance, shelters now in the process of decommissioning their marketing center. I think it's been removed from the area. They are, uh, Procon is organizing for that whole replanting plan that has, that has been before you and has been approved. Um, some of it's just letting the ground thaw, getting the snow out getting out of like heavy, heavy mud kind of conditions with all the rain that we've had and hopefully we start to clear in the next couple of weeks. So we're hopeful that we're going in the right direction. There's some debris cleanup that has been buried by the snow that also, you know, is part of the spring cleanup, if you will, mm -hmm. and finalizing uh, those plants. So um, other weather-related issues are uh, thermal tape for the markings on the roads um, that has that shiny kind of heavy tape that goes on. That needs to be applied um, in a condition that stays, I think, over 60 degrees or something for 24 hours. So we're waiting for some um, for that to happen. Um, the same is true with the sensors that go in the road. Um, that will happen at the bottom of um, Sims Road at Summer Street. And that ties in with some of the traffic optimization sequencing that has been done with the town. So um, those are those are the kind of uh, stuff that that we're working on. And others, uh, the concrete pours for the bus stop um, and the um, and the completion of the sidewalk where the um, shelters marketing operation has been. It's all like the 360's obligation to complete that sidewalk, and it's not very complicated construction. It's just it's a lot easier to do when it's when the weather's cooperating. So. Um, just to go through the list of items to complete, um, just sequentially and some rough uh, dollar amounts. Um, it's the loop detector at the bottom of Sims Road. Expect to be done by outside date would be May 15th. Um, it is weather dependent. Um, it's already under contract with Siemens, uh, which is, has the contract for all of the town to do the, all the loop, a lot of the loop detectors. It's $7,800. Um, need apply thermoplastic tape for the striping. Um, it's not a lot of money, I think it's $3,000, but um, weather dependent. Um, completing the sidewalk curbing at the Shelter Marketing Center. We should have that done um, hopefully in a couple weeks, but, 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 but no later than uh, May 15th is our expectation, $5,000. Uh, the completion of the bus stop, um, that is surprisingly expensive at $15,200. Um, we are trying to get service up there as soon as we can. If we have it done by June 30th, I believe, uh, June, uh, end of May, we can get into the June, th June startup um, mode with the NBTA, and that's our goal. Um, the stop bar at Woodside Lane, that'll be done when we do the thermoplastic. Um, that's very cheap. <coughs> that's just the, str the, the painting on the road. Mm -hmm. I think the stop sign has already been installed. Um, there's a bunch of hay bales and erosion control that are one of the last things to be removed when the construction fencing is removed primarily around the shelter site they'll be doing theirs. Um, there is some at the lower end of some of the um, uh, riprap slope areas and some extra uh, erosion control that was put in over the winter to control the erosion as much as possible in, in the lower Vista Park. Um, all those things are you know, hopefully in part of a spring landscaping cleanup uh, mode. Um, one item that was pointed out that um, we'll be doing, I don't think it's an LDA obligation, is, but it's to clean up the patch basins for the um, infiltration that happened in the um, drainage uh, system. Um, that's just part of a routine annual maintenance um, of that, so that we'll be doing that. And um, there's the, the replanting of the Shelter Brightview Marketing Center, uh, which is fairly significant. And um, there's, um, there was one construction error with um, uh, the parking spaces at the Sims uh, Upper Vista Park that just is a striping um, correction that needs to be done. And that's uh, also weather dependent. So those are primarily you know, the scope of work. Um, we see them as relatively minor. Um, 
you know, we would like to consider these sort of punch lists, like, it, and if we're able to, um, we're going to do these as quickly as we can. Yeah. Um, we understand that we're also, you know, trying to finish administra the administration of the CR and getting that recorded. So there's a couple of other things that we're doing in parallel. So we're going to try to do as much of those things as possible. Um, but these are things that could be um, added to our escrow completion, which was part of the LBA, which is a hundred thousand dollar payment that's already been held by the ARB to ensure the completion of the project. But it will just be an extra layer of. Um, of security for the town, and um, we'd be hopeful that we could close out our certificate of occupancy uh, to finalize our occupancy permits. We feel that some of these things don't really relate to occupancy of the buildings. However, we're going to try to do these as quickly as possible, and we're doing this, so we're hopeful by the time we're able to have these other CR documents done that it's a matter of weeks. We're, right. we're, we're there. We're, we're, we're done with everything. So mm -hmm. um, that's a quick, quick synopsis. I can track where they hit which conditions of approval. There's only about four, so it's whether you want to get into it or not. I think, I, you, you, actually, I shouldn't speak for the board. I, I think the notion was is to go through the list to give people a sense mm -hmm. for what's left. Um, I don't think that it, it makes a, we could go through the different things as well on, on the list over here, but what you're going to find is that they're very much uh, similar to what's been described, other than things like, um, uh, the uh, and, and we don't have both, so so I think maybe it's it's just a little bit tough, and you guys didn't see this ahead of time, mm -hmm. is uh, part of it. But why don't you take it um, and review it, and we can kind of go over any questions you have at the next meeting. We can put an agenda item on there. Yeah. Uh, but I think what we're trying to give a sense for between Laura and Jay and yeah, Carol this working yeah. on this. Yeah. That's okay, Carol. It doesn't. You don't even need to kind of go through it. It's really this punch list here. Is this is what we're Okay. We're starting to get down to, other than some big items like um, uh, recording the CR, the CR and the payments that go along with that. So right. you know those those are big yeah, items. So, but so one one that. thing just to add to what Mike is saying that, that we, we, we think is important is uh, with the condominium sales that we have on. Um, you know, a lot of these buyers have been under contract for a while and are anxious <coughs> to close. Um, one of the things that we need in order to close is first the CR to be recorded and kind of close out our conditions of approval, which then allows us to get certificate of occupancy, which then allows us to actually close on the unit. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a vicious circle, and there is urgency um, with these buyers who, you know, some of which have been, you know, in interim housing, have sold their homes, or waiting to move in, you know, different various stages. Um, but they're they want to know when they can move in, and we've we've lost two or three buyers because we haven't been able to say when we're going to close. Mm -hmm. And um, so so we're hopeful that we're going to get through that. I think our account is, the, I think it's seven or eight. There's seven that are under some either reservation or um, a pur a purchase and sale agreement um, that we're processing through. Um, but we, 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 need to, we need to accomplish both of those in order to close uh, the unit. So. Um, the brokers have their listings through June, so you know, into June. So um, you know these things are on the market; they're being actively. Um, the brokers are working very, very hard. The, the traffic has been decent um, for that. So you know, but but we do want to get this certificate of occupancy done for a whole variety of reasons. As do we. As does everybody. So yeah. um, so like I said, we we will focus on finishing up as much as we can as quickly as we can, um, and we would like to you know, come before you to. Preconditions for the certificate of occupancy as soon as possible. That'd be great. That'd be great. Jake, I, I think the punch list approach makes a lot of sense. Um, administratively, how do you foresee this working? Let me just sort of flesh out my question. So there's already a hundred thousand uh, dollars for completion. So we're not talking about a new hundred thousand dollars. We're talking about just adding these items into that. Yeah, it would basically be just amending the scope for what that covers and that we'd have, yeah, the idea would be as we um, sort of complete these items, we go through a process of releasing, you know, some of those funds. Are you talking I, about piecemeal releases? Well, I think that realistically, you know, mm -hmm. they're probably all going to be done at, at but you know, okay. in June. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, we're not looking it's for just, like every, you know, every, just every couple of days having to. another one, never one done. But, right, but I mean, there may be, you know, two phases <coughs> that make sense as we go forward. Okay. Hopefully yeah. this all comes together I, very quickly. You know, it's just having been an escrow agent more times than I wanted to be for the you know, 
the rest of my career. You know, if you're getting paid up for a $2,000 release here and there, you know, it's just kind of just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. We understand that. And I think, I think that, you know, for if we had, you know, 60000 or $70,000 mm -hmm. of work that was done and we were going to be sitting around waiting for some reason for you know, mm -hmm. three or four months, we might want to come to you and say, sure. at least two-thirds of it or half of that amount or whatever the full amount. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think realistically, the, the bond would be placed. We would like to have that cover any, any doubt about whether the conditions of approvals are going to be satisfied. Um, we would get all the ones that we can done. And then, for instance, um, you know, it could be the, the um, striping for the road, which is a very minor called, amount. Yeah. Um, you know, we say we're posting a bond. You know, we'd like to finish. We need to get our certificate of occupancy. Yeah. You know, let's, let's have that be identified as part of the requirements for the escrow. Okay. Uh, uh, Christine, sorry. Uh, so all the, the repairs to the Lower Vista Park, I think there were more down there than the upper, on the landscape that was eroded over the, yep. the winter and stuff didn't take, and we were looking at the location of the benches. Is that all under the 30 and the 5 here? Item 6 and 7? That, that's the intention. Basically. You know, that uh, we're, again, that whole area is so weather dependent right now. Yeah. I mean, if it hadn't rained like crazy for the last four days, we may be in there trying to finish finish that up now. Right. Um, so, but that's where you're. Yep. We're pocketing that. Okay. Yep. That's yep. my only question. Yeah. Andrew. Yep. Andrew. Also. Carol. Andrew. Okay. The only thing that, that I'll add is that the town historian has indicated um, an interest in trying to revive a solution oh, yeah. for their, our. Um, oh. Yes. So. Um, the board has voted that that is not Mausoleum. a condition. That does not. I, I want to say that that doesn't mean that we're not going to try to figure out a solution that makes sense. And so we're still open for new ideas okay. <laughs> on that. On the crosses. Yes. Yes. Um, is it's, it's is Mike Radner working on some new ideas? Um, no. No. Well, we're looking at what what is an idea to have Mike Radner document. I mean, we've we've gone through I think three or four different iterations of of trying to figure that out. Um, so. Um, we are, um, I think it makes sense to, to, to have some thinking with, with the town historian and see, you know, we've got some different ideas with maybe some planting beds. The difficulty is, is you put them in the ground, they start to look gravestone-y, like, <laughs> yeah, right. have, a, That's have a sort of a death connotation, which is not the intention of anybody. So we're trying to find a way that sort of removes that and, mm -hmm. and sort of elevates it so it can be a historical reference. That, um, it should be about birth, not about death. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we would hope to be. So, okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, it's not a hearing or anything else. I know, but there are just a couple items that I think Jake left off of his list. Um, one big one for neighbors is cleaning up of the conservation. It's there. That's is on that on the list? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's what you've got. Uh, those things that we talked about internally that um, we, I think, is more of a snack issue. We got a neighborhood complaint about noise and okay. You know, well, like you know, once again, that's all MPP. Okay. As long as the, the conservation cleanup is on your list. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. removal of the uh, erosion. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the marketing trailer? No, it, no, no, it, no. There needs to be a cleanup of the whole conservation. Area. Things in the conservation. Yeah, that's yeah. not at the snow. The fence was put up. It needs to be cleaned up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Bill, old Hey, Bill from the yeah. erosion control. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the last thing to do. Most, yeah. most importantly, the builder inspector realizes that as he's going through. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, the next item on the agenda is our discussion and presentation of warrant articles, which was not done. So I don't have a report for, uh, that's why you didn't get it in your package, because I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to try to do that this week. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. No, you know what, though? Yeah. Why don't we, because Susan's been here, why don't we flip flop and uh, talk about the Community Preservation Act first? Okay. Uh, I think we kind of screwed that. I didn't realize anyone was going to be here from outside to talk oh, about it. Otherwise, I, I would have gotten you on earlier. No, so, that's so sorry about that. Thank you so um, much. So, let's flip flop it if we do have something we want to talk about on the uh, presentation. So. Um, next item on the agenda as we flip flop this is going to be a little bit of a, a discussion on the Community Preservation Act. There is a uh, warrant article that's uh, on the Bond um, uh, County Warrant uh, this year <laughs> about uh, passing the Community Preservation Act for the town of Marlon. And I think we're fairly certain that, you know, well, there's a good chance that people are going to want to know what the redevelopment board. Uh, things about the Community Preservation Act. So, you know, I was hoping tonight to introduce the board uh, to it and to the uh, w what's going on uh, with respect to uh, that as part of town meeting. And maybe before town meeting at the next meeting or even at the meeting before the first meeting of town meeting, maybe have a, a more fulsome discussion about what the board thinks. It doesn't have to be anything stated or anything else, but if we, if we do, if we are asked our opinion, we should probably try to uh, get one if we can. So, anyway, with that as background, uh, would you mind introducing That was myself? a good introduction. My name okay. is Susan Stamps, and um, I'm leading the effort to have Arlington adopt the Community Preservation Act, or CPA. It's Chapter 44 of the General Laws. It was a law that was passed in 2000. And in the spring of 2001, the first group of 29 cities and towns uh, passed CPA, and then it went on the ballot in the fall. Um, it is a two-step process. The legislative body of the city or town has to adopt it, and then it has to, and then it's voted on in the next general election. So, in our case, it's on the, um, this town meetings. It's Article 22. And if it passes town meeting, then it will go on the ballot probably November. Probably not the September primary, but the general election in November. Um, so we're encouraging town meeting members, even if you're not exactly sure that CPA is a good idea for Arlington, please vote yes anyway so that the voters could get to decide. Yeah. Pitches. But just briefly, to would you like to me to briefly describe what the CPA is? Sure, yeah, okay. that'd be great. Um, we do, we had distributed this brochure um, that describes it. Um, what it does is it enables a town to set aside a dedicated fund for, for specific purposes. Um, open space and um, open space and conservation, outdoor recreational resources such as parks and playgrounds. Number two, number three, community housing, which is both affordable housing and moderate income housing. Which, if you're a housing person, you know that means people at a certain level, but also people at another level. So it's, it it encompasses a lot of people. Um, and then the fourth area is historic preservation. Um, so, and why would the state have passed this at all? Well, because as we know full well in Arlington, town and city budgets are tough. And the, the poor services are always funded um, first, and Arlington does a great job with that. The schools, emergency services, <coughs> roads, etc. And um, there's not a whole lot left over for these sorts of projects, which, which really create the community's quality of life and make, it, make the community a place that people want to be. Um, and, and it was passed in response to a lot of communities being really concerned about their quality of life um, being diminished because of growth and, and inability to acquire space, inability to uh, acquire uh, space for parks and then to be able to keep them up. Um, inability to, to uh, maintain the historic resources. And for Arlington, I know one area of growth that the town is hoping for is a growth in tourism. That that is seen as a, as a big um, possibility for economic development. 
and certainly the kinds of amenities that, that Arlington can have if we adopt CPA are exactly the sorts of things that are going to draw people to the town. The recreational facilities, the, the, our wonderful historic resources, and, and, and also allow us to maintain a diverse community, which I think is important to the town. Um, and we can do that by making a lot more affordable housing available. Um, so the, so the, the statute, the CPA, allows the town to create, have this dedicated fund, and the, the, the money in the fund comes from four, two resources, from the town and from the state. And the town side comes from a very modest surcharge on the property tax. Um, and the state side comes from a surcharge at the registry of deeds for every document that's recorded. So, um, in the early is ahead. that sorry is that surcharge yeah. only on the towns for the towns that do it or is that is no, that surcharge happening for every everybody town. and they're just not getting our cut? So that's so right. The, uh, uh, that's a great point. point. Okay. Yeah, that, it is a great point. Yeah. Um, and so, that, we're, and so we're we're subsidizing we're subsidizing everybody else. Perfect. There you yeah. go. Wow, that's that's huge. Yeah. The uh, the Kennedy School did a, a report. In uh, 2007, well, I'd stress that point. In yeah. fact, it was it was the the title of the report was something like um, Community Preservation Act: Who benefits and who pays. Mm -hmm. And in the early years, it was the it was the the more affluent towns with the well educated population who saw this thing and said, Ooh, Oh, where do we yeah. get that? <laughs> and they passed. And so what you had was these monies going into the state fund from property transfers everywhere, Roxbury, uh, I mean, wherever the, the poor towns and then the big towns were taking, it was sort of a reverse Robin, <coughs> Robin Hood effect. Now in recent years, a lot of the, the less affluent towns have gotten on board. It's really time for Arlington to get on board. Somerville passed it last year. Um, places like Fall River have it, Quincy, um, a lot of the North Shore, the North Shore communities are, they're just, they're, they, Salem has it now, Gloucester has it now, <coughs> you, and you take communities like Gloucester and Salem, they are, they're, they're well-known communities, but they're not that affluent, particularly Gloucester, and they're, Marblehead's working on it this year, just as we are, they're on our timeline, um, so far, 155 cities and towns have adopted CPA in the 13, 14 years. Um, it's the, um, the state has, in state money alone, has given out a little under five, well, I, I'm going to say five billion dollars, and I know that sounds like a ridiculous uh, one number. Of billions. And right. it's just, it, it's got a lot of zeros. Um, the, the Kennedy School did this study, I said in 2007, the, the reverse Robin Hood study, um, and they, in that they had an analysis of, the, of how much money each city and town in the Commonwealth had contributed to the state fund. And at that time, in the five year period from 2002 to 2007, Arlington had contributed $1,140,000 to the state CPA fund. Mm -hmm. And it's been, what, five, six years, seven years since then. And you could at least double that, if not triple it. So that's a lot of money to leave on the table. Um, the, the surcharge that, um, and this, the Board of Selectmen is supporting this. Okay, they are. Okay. They are supporting this. And in fact, the motion at town meeting is going to be their motion. And um, under the statute, the surcharge requested on the property tax, which is funds the state side of the CPA fund, can be up to 3%. The motion's going to be for 1.5%, which on the average Arlington residence, which the Department of Revenue says in 2014 is $515,000, will be approximately $86 a year. That's it. Um, in the early years, the, it was 100%. So that the estimate is that, that at that level, we're probably talking about a million dollars in, in the first year um, from the town. And then a match of, in the early years, it was 100%. 
but then as more cities and towns joined, there are presently 155 cities and towns that have joined. <coughs> um, it's gone down gradually. Two years ago, it was down to 26%. But still, that's a 26% return on, on the taxpayer's dollar. That's, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good return. Um, last year, was, it was 53 because the state legislature actually appropriated some money. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure what's going to happen this year. Uh, interestingly, there is an opt-out provision in the law, this is my favorite part, um, which says that after five years, a city or town can opt, to, it can opt out of CPA. Huh. And it has never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Once cities and towns have it, they're sold. It's great. I will say that the the I think what certainly convinced um, at least a couple of members of the selectmen to vote in favor of the CPA is that many many of the projects in the five year capital plan are are CPA eligible projects. So they actually see CPA as being able to stretch town dollars so that we can go further out before we have to ask for an operational override. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, the and 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 the the monies are why is why why does the redevelopment board care about this? Well, actually, you guys have a big role to play under the statute. Um, the CPA monies are administered by a community preservation committee. Um, now, all projects do ultimately have to be uh, approved by town meeting. CPA funds have to be appropriated by town meeting, just like regular general town funds. But <coughs> the community preservation committee uh, takes projects, whether they're suggested by um, the CONSCOM or the Historical Commission or um, the, the citizens group down the street that wants to do this little pocket park somewhere. They take all of the project proposals and they look at them and they figure out what's worthy of funding and they are required by statute to consult with the other town boards. This is not a renegade committee, which I think it, when we first started talking about this around town, people were afraid of this is going to be some kind of, you know, the money was going to go into this black hole and people that weren't accountable were going to be doing crazy things with it. But there, uh, the, uh, under the statute, uh, there has to be a member of the redevelopment board on the CPC. There has to be, a, and this is appointed by the board. So, for example, okay. if you were, your board would say, oh, we want Mike to be our, our person on the, the CPC. There has to be somebody <coughs> from CONSCOM. There has to be somebody from the Historical Commission. There has to be somebody from the Housing Authority. And, um, and there has to be someone from the Recreation Commission. Okay. So that's five people that are required members appointed by those boards. And then, and then there can be up to four more people uh, appointed by the Board of Selectmen, people at large. So um, they, and they are, like I said, they are required to, to the, the, the committee is required to consult with each of those boards that I just named and, um, and any other boards that might be, have some sort of an interest in their project. And I, I, um, there, there are some um, financial um, um, groups in town or, or people who are, who are very concerned about the town's finances, as, as they should be, who are <coughs> concerned, again, that this might be sort of a, a committee that's just going to kind of go off and do its thing and sort of just muck up the works as far as financial planning and everything. But um, as I said, there has to be that, that communication with other boards. And in the towns that have the CPA, and I actually moved here four years ago from a town that has CPA. And my experience there was that it was very much of a collaborative process. That wherever, oh, we need to do this, or this land has come up, can we buy it? The Finance Committee would talk to the Community Preservation Committee, which would talk to the Planning Board, which would talk to the CONSCOM, and everybody would try to get to, to, 
together to figure out how can we get this project done? You know, do we want to use, and one, do we want to use the CPA money, can, the whatever. One of the really useful things about having the CPA fund is that a lot of um, projects, you can get outside grant money if you can kick in some, a few hundred thousand dollars or whatever. <laughs> and that's Carl, what, yeah. that, I came from Carlisle, and that's what we saw, there were several projects that were done that way where CPA money provided the seed to get um, funding. Yeah. One interesting thing, can I talk about the email that you got? On the oh, sure. yeah. yeah. So, so one thing I recall from a long time ago, for some reason, and it just stuck in my head, is a long time ago when CPA first came up, mm -hmm. I had heard, overheard someone, I think, and I'm probably just plain wrong, that said that if you did CPA, you would not get the mm -hmm. CDBG, uh, uh, the Community Development Block Grant money. And uh, so I said to Carol, well, what about that? I mean, because I remember that. I, for some reason, it just stuck in my head. And so Carol actually put an email to the listserv, right? on the Mass Planners <laughs> Listserv, which is a listserv for all planners in the state. I just posted a query, because has anyone heard of this, this link? And right away I got about eight or ten people saying, no, and don't put a link like, like, like that. In fact, we um, have been encouraged by CDBG to go yeah. after CPA funds and to adopt yeah, CPA. Yeah, actually, yeah. And then it died down for a few days. I didn't hear anyone say that they had ever heard or had an experience where there was a negative was impact yes. on CDBG. But then this morning I was interested to see that Kurt Gertner, who is with the um, Executive Office of Energy, I, I yes, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, EOA. That EOA. Yeah. He said that he, he wanted to be make it very clear. Is how we put it. Yeah. He was very assertive. Said, if anything. It's an advantage. CDBG, HUD sees it as an advantage if you're leveraging CPA. So it was interesting to to really test that out and to hear yeah. really without exception. Of yeah, he checked in with yes. HUD and they said that it was. Yeah, that's enough. been a rumor going around. We were actually just made aware of that today. Oh, and did you hear that too? Okay. Our own people researched that and said that's absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's important to. But to what's do. interesting is that a lot <laughs> of the, if you look at the list of CB, CBD, whatever that is. CDBG. Yeah. yeah. Um, funds that are uh, projects that are funded, a lot of them could be paid for with CPA funds, which means that CDBG money could be used for other projects. Mm -hmm. So, and there's really great possibilities here. Does the high school qualify as a historic? The um, well, the, the original high school, the Fusco building, is historic. Mm -hmm. And so, any res renovations that have anything to do with that part of the high school would qualify. And of course, you know, the, the playing fields qualify for CPA funds. Mm. Um, well, because they are now dual recreational, recreational oh, resources. Right. Yeah. Right. Historic okay. resources yeah. do have to follow the Secretary of the Interior standards for, for preservation. But it's pretty easy to do that in the rehabilitation category. That's probably the approach that they would take with the rebuild. Yeah, they really don't. I mean, since the, you know, the high school is, is up in the air, um, Adam Chapdelaine did some estimates for how much of the high school, if it was a renovation versus a completely new building, how much could be used. And, and I, I'm not going to start throwing those numbers around, but it was, it was you know, not it's chump change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions or comments? Not at this point. Yeah. Well, thank Susan, you. thank you. That's, that's great. Um, yeah. Okay. I think oh, so, yeah, excuse me. Sure. So, yeah, I, um, I, I'm sure you will get asked at town meeting, you know, well, you know how they always say, does any board have anything to say? And then maybe you'll be specifically asked, I don't know, I would imagine you would. And I would certainly hope, you know, at the very least, that you're not going to get up and say, we think this is a really bad idea. <laughs> I don't get the sense that you're going to say that. Um, but I, I, you know, yeah, it'd be great if you get up and say, we think it's a great idea that the kind of projects would come before us all the time. If there could be some more flexibility in some of the things that we'd like to see, due to the availability of CPA funds, we can encourage people to go that route and bring us a project we like even better. Mm -hmm. That's great.
Yeah, no, we'll definitely take it up. Uh, I think okay. th this is a great introduction and do our homework and, and make sure that uh, we, we take the right kind of vote. Okay, well, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for coming yeah. and, and sitting through the rest. Oh, <laughs> so, that was very interesting, appreciate actually. Susan, nice do you know if they videoed the CPA presentation? They did. It's on ACMI. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's a great way to So the Arlington Land Trust yeah. did a nice, very nice presentation. It was a great presentation. There's also a really good website it. that's on that on brochure. This. Does anybody not have a brochure that wants one? No quite um, is it Maybe it's at the bottom of the back? Yeah, communitypreservation.org. Yeah. Yes. They have a top ton of information, and you're just going to be green with envy when you see all the <coughs> cool projects. Yeah, I've looked at the website, and there was some really amazing things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and when you look at the list of city and t cities and towns, yeah. it kind of makes Arlington look like, oh, you left a lot of money on the table. One of the things, when Scott was talking about the bikeway, mm -hmm. one of the things that I feel is a little um, ironic is that there is this master planning process going on right now with the bikeway um, involving the, the committees of their, the, the uh, Bedford, okay. Lexington, right. and Arlington. Mm -hmm. um, there's a draft, maybe Carol knows about it, but there's, there's, there's a draft report and they're talking about doing drainage improvements, um, widening the bikeway, which would be a good safety thing. Um, amenities like more benches, maybe more exits off the bikeway, those sorts of things. Well, the irony is, is that those are all CPA eligible projects. Mm -hmm. Bedford has CPA, Lexington has CPA, Arlington, well, nope, straight out of the general fund. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. okay, well, thank Great. you very much for thank having you. us. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, now we're going to flip back to uh, the discussion of the presentation of Warren articles, and Carol's got some I'm maps. just going to hand out some maps um, that you, you want to bear in mind that this is actually a slide that will be projected on the screen. Uh, I think in order to show the districts that the proposed <coughs> vote would allow it, it, the, the districts in which the proposed vote would allow uh, the medical marijuana treatment centers, <coughs> you, you want to be able to s uh, display that on a slide to town meeting members. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and if you're at the back of the hall, this has to be a pretty high contrast slide. The labels have to, be, the street labels have to be fairly large. Or I think the, it would also <coughs> Preferable if the water bodies were blue, just to help people orient themselves. Right, right. Them. right. I think that's General. right. I think that's right. He did prepare one with blue, and I neglected to print it out for you to show it to you. So this shows B3 and B5, the two districts. Uh, he'll also provide some slides that show other districts in case they come up, uh, so that you'll have those ready to see and to refer to. Uh, I would suggest that, Mike, if you want to, you, you were going to put together some thinking or talking points, I'd be happy to help you with that based on some of the um, work that the department has did on preparing the language of the vote and specifics Great. of how to implement it. So in order to anticipate what some town meeting members might, um, what issues they may yep. bring up. Yeah, I think I think what we talk about, and I think this is what you're speaking to too, is is we'll be able to overlay a B4 on this or, or some other uh, districts right. to really be able to show yeah, we those can differences show on B2 and B4. And this is where when we start talking about talking points, real. we can figure out what slides yeah. and which districts <coughs> are most likely to come up in the right. town meeting discussion. It will probably be a series of slides we'll have available this one and then a second one showing additional districts and then more districts or fewer um, so that it will appear as though they're layering. I, the I think that's exactly, I think that's a real good point. What's the distance that we're um, trying to stay away from schools? We're, well the law the says law. that they, if I'm not you mistaken, get a, it's 500, 500, 500 feet. foot buffer, that's what I thought. building okay. to building. So can we put a circle around each school showing that 500 foot? 
so people can see that, or is, is that going to be too small? Let's see. Half a mile. That's going to be small. That's 2,500. It's probably the size of the... No, it's the size of this. It's <coughs> kind of small. It's the size of one of these marks on the graphic scale, I think. Because a mile is 5,280. Yeah, because yeah, that's a tenth so of 500 feet. about a tenth 2, of a mile. 2,600. Right. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. Well, isn't it kind of yeah, so the this is, is? these are each 500 feet, basically. Yeah. So none of the districts are within 500 feet of a, of a school. But you'd have a circle about this big then. Well, I guess what I'm saying, Christine, is I'm not sure on. if it's worth the effort if none of the districts, if none of the, the parcels fall within the... Um, well, the reason I mention it is because somebody's going to ask, are you within 500 feet anywhere? You can just say no, or you can show them. Okay. okay. With a circle, like just a dash circle, maybe. In order for it to be really legible, we could also make it a bright yellow circle mm -hmm. around the... A it could be a zone. Yeah. A solid, <laughs> filled-in circle. Sure. Yeah. And the school could be black, so that it pops out in, behind the, in front of the circle. Even if the school was not even legible from the back of the hall, just seeing those yellow yeah. dots and how far they are from right. the 3B5 yeah. will communicate. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, that question has already so, come up a few times. So, so it, we, we should be clear, though, that's, that's good on the schools, but the law is actually a little bit broader than that. And so I guess my only concern with this approach on the circles is that actually the law is any... Oh, gosh. Child-focused. Yeah. Child-focused right, right, right. building. Okay? Right, so, which we can't predict where they're all going to be. No, and right. we can't put everything down. Child care that facility, is, a daycare facility. Right, right. right. There, they change so a lot. So my, my fear is, is is that by putting those circles around there, what you're doing is you're saying, these are the, this is this is where it's verboten, right? You can't put them here. Well, actually, you can't put them, you know, I know that Great Expectations is on Summer Street right here, you know, right down, for, they're, they're, it's right yep. there. So. I know that it, you can't have one within 500 feet of that. So, so my point is, is I think you're giving a, actually, I'd rather be able to put all those things on there and show, look, you can't put them anywhere here, you know, and it's still not really around here, although there might be some right around here. I think my concern is, is that, is that it, it kind of skews the law a little bit, right? Because and the law I understand broader. what you're saying, but why not say, okay, this is, these are the fixed points that are child-focused buildings. There are others that are I think the problem a little is bit more interchangeable that will come up, and we will have to account for all of those also. But this at least shows you where the fixed points are. But bear in mind that the state won't issue a license to someone. It's really the state, that's, that's where that work is done. It's not done at the local level where with our siting. I have a question that have have I don't know if anybody has, has, has thought about, but the state will um, churches that have Sunday schools, does that is that a child-focused well, use? Yeah. You see, and I think, so So let's be, let's be clear about something. I don't think anyone knows anything yeah. with respect to this. And I think the point is, and, and this is, if, if you talk to uh, certain town officials and everything else, this is part of the frustration yeah. with the law. Yep. is that it is so um, uh, obtuse at yes. this point. Um, so, so I don't think there are any answers for that. Another question, though, we need also to show Arlington Catholic. Yeah. That, that, That's not shown as a school. I know it's not a town of Arlington I school. That, I, guess. I deliberately told him to only put town owned okay. schools Probably because we don't have control over non-town owned schools. Mm -hmm. We can't determine I mean, it's been there for decades, obviously, yeah. but any private school, we, we, if we put Arlington Catholic, we would, I think it would be assumed that we'd put other private schools, but, the center but none of them we, we really have any control over keeping or, or right, where they can come or where go. they would go okay. um, if they moved. So why even put the schools? I see that. <laughs> if we can't even put the circle and we can't answer any of those questions, maybe we well, shouldn't we even control, put the schools. The town does control the public schools. The public schools. Yeah, I guess that. <coughs> so that's why we don't have to put them on there. But that's one that I thought was a no-brainer. This issue of the ch the, the children lo um, centered Focus, locations yeah. is going to come up in one in one manner or another. At a minimum, I think it's easy enough to show where the town-controlled schools are and how far they are from B3 and B5. 
then I think inevitably we'll I mean, have to have the discussion about how hard it is to keep the non-town controlled child-centered locations away from B3 and B5, but that's work that the state does when they go through the licensing and permitting process with an individual applicant. Well, I think not only that, but I'm, I'm assuming that's kind of part of the, the self-help to neighbors and everything else, is to say, hey, wait a second, you can't put that dispensary there because, you know, there's a dance studio there. And that dance studio is, you know, so, so in the end, I think it's going to be that which drives what all this means and not us or, you know, the town in any mm -hmm. sense, right? That's so, my understanding. So, so, yeah, I don't mind having the schools on there. I guess the thing I was just saying was once you get into a little bit more representation of what it means to be 500 feet around that school, I guess I get a little bit more concerned that, well, you know what, there's those yellow circles actually all over town. And, you know, it, and I think that by putting the yellow circles there, that, that's more my point. I mean, I'm, I think I'm okay with putting the schools there just so you can kind of get a sense for where you are. I mean, in, in essence, you want to put the water in blue. I think the other thing that schools do is they tell people they where orient they, they orient you. Yeah, I think you're right. So I don't, I don't think it's bad from an orientation perspective. My only concern was putting the circle around them just gave the sense that those were the only circles. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot more than that. So, so that, okay, that was my only point on, okay, on the circles. Point. So. I now see your point clearly. <laughs> um, what thing else on the map? So, so yeah, so I still have to do the, uh, the actual report, so I'll, I'll get that done. Um, but, uh, but this is, yeah, this is, I think this will show nicely if we get some water on there. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Thank you. Right David Fields on the staff. Yeah, the, the other things that Thank we you. talked about, I noticed in the notes, you know, about showing the regulations for a special permit. Those kinds of things are also going to get put in a graphic, or how are you going to handle that? Uh, the um, key points of the language of the vote. Yeah. No. No. The uh, that, and also then someone mentioned that we should have the. Uh, you know, the EDR requires ready, ready, oh, right. ready to go. It's yeah. in these notes nicely. I had, I had mentioned that. Yeah, right. given the fact that we have seven minutes to present, I would think that that would be almost. It's going to be a handout. A, a yeah. handout or an answer. A uh, backup. Sure. Yeah. Or, oh, or, yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is yeah. just reserving the. We can't simply bullet them, right? They're too, too, too many. That's pretty, they're pretty lengthy. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can really edit them down because they are what they are. Can you so. just put a title? Do they, there can are they be edited down to that? Yeah, Maybe what we can do is just yeah, take out the titles. ones that are like lead, I don't know if lead, sustainable, <clears throat> it's a sustainable design. Is that important to town meeting members in considering the review of the location of a medical marijuana treatment center? But safety, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I, I do think that the, um, relation of buildings to environment standard is going to be important to town meeting members to yeah. that discussion because some people have um, observed that there's a distinction in appearance, one would think, between the growing facility and a dispensing facility, but there's nothing to c compel the board to approve something that looks like a warehouse in one of your business districts. Mm -hmm. You can tell. you you. Your standard would be that the whether it's dispensing or growing, it has to look like it belongs in the commercial district. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a standard that I, I think some <coughs> town meeting members would want to hear about. So maybe Mike can um, take the twelve standards and I'll be happy to ones. Yeah, yeah, maybe we get most relevant yeah. Yeah. to mm. yeah. just to put just them up and, 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 and then you can reference the rest of them by you know they're in. Uh, Eleven point oh six of the zoning bylaw. Yeah, here's the ones that mm. will that probably we anticipate apply would most, be most most applicable. Yeah, signage, and you can explain their signage Actually, laws are stronger than ours. Exactly. Yeah. So, so signage was the reason we didn't touch it was because the state is, is stronger. Than but our you own. could point that out. Yeah. that's one of our criteria. But the state's yeah. is even more stringent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll work something. And another one that, that Andrew brought up was that the board should be prepared to review state permitting and to mention the town's 
working group that drafted the proposal? Those are notes that you probably have. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we don't personally know much about the state and how it works. I mean, I think we can get some of that. Christine Bonjour. Yeah, it, that's really going to be Christine. Yeah. Okay. On that. And mention the town's working group. I thought that was good when you presented that. You know, but let everybody know that. Who who was in on it? Right. Yeah, we really have the cross section. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah people. The town has been thinking about this. Right. So right. Yeah. No, that definitely is. It is easy to have the minutes so quickly, Carol. Yeah, thank the you. minutes help. Do <laughs> you have to thank our new administrator assistant? Oh. <laughs> and if everyone's okay with that agenda item, maybe we can move to that, which is our last agenda item, which is the minutes. Okay. The last meeting. Start down the other end. Start there. Andy, anything on the other end? I think they look great. Good. Andrew? I had one change on page two where it says Mr. Fitzsimmons moved, and then it says Mr. Bonnell recommended no action. Did those two sentences need to be flipped? Or perhaps my recommendation of no action goes somewhere else, but certainly not after Bruce's motion. Are we about halfway down the page? This is yeah. actually on the third page, right? Because that's front and back of page one. Third page. Two. Third page. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Mr. Mr. What are the two again? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 right here. here. So, I, well, uh, I didn't recommend two. no action that's after this motion. No, that's not right. Oh. Uh, Where is here it? Here it is. Are you found? It's the sixth paragraph. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Bernard or Mecca. I think you just flip flop the two sentences. Yeah. That's all I yeah. Mean. yeah. Okay. You recommend a new action that Mr. Vincent mm -hmm. has moved. I see. Okay. Okay. Okay, I do have a few. Is that your only one? That's my only one. And these are mostly for clarity. And and you guys can veto me <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> so this would be the uh, let's see, the paragraph on the first page is that starts with Ms. Sapinski, so what is that, the fifth one, fourth one? Yep. Okay, asked what material, I'd like, I'd like this to read, Ms. Sapinski asked what material will replace the formal patio at the door that was eliminated. So after the word patio, we would scratch the rest of that sentence and the whole next sentence. Because then I'd like to, to read. One second. Ms. Sapinski asked what material will replace the former patio at the door that was eliminated. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I think that's a little clearer. And so you'd then scratch, would be now, <coughs> mm -hmm. period. Mr. We'd scratch. Mr. Holland replied that mulch is now proposed rather than landscaping. So I think we can scratch that sentence also and just say Mr. Holland commented that he thought. It was a landscape bed with the rhododendron. I thought that it was a landscape bed with the rhododendron. Okay. I think that would be clearer also. Okay. Okay, then if you go two paragraphs down from that, Mr. Siegfried said they had encountered a ledge at the wall area. Just say ledge. Okay. No A. Then the next paragraph, I'd like to add a sentence after the one that says, the board of Ms. Kowalski asked for detail on the trees and plants removed as a result of the parking changes. Oh, thank you. I, I remember commenting, and Ms. Sapinski commented that the space is now very cramped and the landscape area has been substantially reduced, making the wall more exposed and the parking awkward. <laughs> I can give this to you, yes. Because <laughs> we didn't say anything about the area being more cramped and that parking space being very awkward where it was. Okay, then the next sentence. Uh, Mr. Upton commented that the wall pinning was ex an extremely technically challenging task, causing space to be shifted from the entry to the public sidewalk. 
from the entry, yeah. building entry to the public sidewalk, you could say, or the, yeah, entry area. Just to say why that area became so squeezed. Is this worthy or not really? Through the sidewalk. I'll I'm give you my I'm notes. I'm sneezing over here. I, Actually, I'm what I can do is frankly. type these in red for you, because I don't know if you could read my notes. I can hardly read them. That might be easier. Okay, and then the very last paragraph on that page. Ms. Sapinski stated that the detectable should be warning strip instead of wearing strip. It's no longer needed. Actually, like warring. <laughs> like and warring I think Katja's name is spelled differently. Somehow. Does that just name have a Y? Yes. It's yes. K-A-T-Y-K. Okay. And P-O-D-S-I-A-D-L-O. Right. right. And then the very last sentence I'd like to change it to, Ms. Sapinski asked why the pavers at the entry were removed. I think that's what we were trying to say. Is that on the same page? In the same paragraph. So is this in a new sentence? It's the last sentence that... That's a rewrite. Yeah, you had this... Oh, my name's spelled wrong, too. I'm a Pinsky now. <laughs> How does that happen with your cell check? It should. I don't know. Do I didn't that? do these. I oh, she probably doesn't have it in hers. No, it would be in there earlier. Anyhow, uh, Ms. Sapinski, instead of saying, continue to say that only now the alteration introduces a change in material that wasn't present before, that didn't make sense to me. So I think what we were talking about was I asked why the pavers at the entry were removed. And then. The next so just say Ms. Sapinski asked why the pavers were removed. Paver, yeah. Pavers at the end. Okay. Yeah. And I can give you this so you can stop writing. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to keep as writing. As long as it, it, I have a few more. I, I'll, be, I'll be giving it to um, Amy. I'll so. type it. Okay. And email it to you and you can just forward it. To if that's not too, too much trouble. No, be. that's easier for everyone. I'm sure about getting it right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then the next paragraph. Um, I wanted to add one sentence to that paragraph also. Uh, Ms. Sapinski requested that materials such as colored asphalt or a applied resin materials such as imprint be considered to designate the drop off. Okay, the second to the last paragraph. Mr. Fitzsimmons mentioned that the question arose of whether one can apply before getting a license. Did we mean one can apply for a location? For a special permit. For a special permit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had that changed too. So I was going to say, right after the okay. word apply, insert the phrase for a special permit. Okay. Which page? The this bottom of page uh, two, second, second paragraph. paragraph. Okay. Second paragraph in the end that starts with Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Fitzsimmons stated that the warrant article is straightforward. No. Um, no. Man, too down from that. that. The question arose of whether one can apply for a special permit. Correct. Okay. Then on the last page, um, the paragraph that starts with Mr. Kerr about the middle of the page. Okay. Turn to Article Eight. You see that one? Yes. Uh, the second to the last sentence before the Board of Selectmen. This will be reported, I think, on instead no, of out? No, it's actually out. Yeah, reported Is it out? out? Is it's that the right term? It's kind of an old yeah, oh, reported okay. out. Parliamentary, yeah, oh, phrase. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, your turn. Just to continue the <laughs> torture, um, at the uh, first page up at the heading, uh, we were in the Town Hall Annex second floor conference room instead of the Selectman's hearing room. Oh. Okay. Um, in the, yeah, about halfway down the page, the paragraph that uh, 
starts with the words, after explaining some minor exterior building alterations, that, that paragraph. Yes. In the last sentence, where it says, one stop moved outside, I wanted to reverse the word stop with one parking space was moved outside. Yeah, or one spot. Or one spot, I should yeah, say. I guess we probably spot. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. probably spot instead of stop. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Parking space sounds better, though. Yeah, that's, no, yeah. that's clear, yeah. actually. Yeah. And on the second page, the third paragraph that starts, Eric Anderson stated that <coughs> the word should be it, not is, that it will be graded mm -hmm. out a bit. And then. I think it's the ninth paragraph that begins with Lorelei colleague of Brattle Street. The last sentence where it says she noticed it had been moved. The it is <coughs> a little vague for me, so I would just say the van. Okay. Uh, and then on the last page, about the fourth or fifth paragraph from the bottom that starts with Ms. Kowalski reported on the status of the master plan. This edits in the second sentence would be Mr. Fitzsimmons asked with respect to the Community Preservation Act, comma, if the master plan advisory board, advisory committee, advisory board, whichever. It's actually a committee, isn't it? I'm so, sorry, MPSC. I was writing, with respect to the Community Preservation Act, comma, if the master plan advisory committee, committee planned to discuss their position, etc. <coughs> right. Might be helpful to separate those two paragraphs, too. So, or the, that paragraph where it starts, the board decided to hold April 7th, that should be a new paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a whole other yeah. spot. Yeah. Right. You good? Yeah. No. J just one thing, um, which is on the second page, Carol. Uh, it's about I don't know a little more than halfway down. It starts with Ms. Friedman mentioned that an outdoor fireplace was present, and that this feature was not allowed. Mr. Kerr stated that he expected the fire chief would, and then I get rid of, be notified and asked to. So that this now says, Mr. Kerr stated that he expected the fire chief would inspect the outdoor fireplace. Mr. Kerr stated that, that he, he expected, expected the fire chief would inspect the outdoor fireplace. We didn't say okay. that we were going to notify him. Okay. And we're not taking on any duty to do that. I mean, that's, that's just part of the permitting process. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Carol. Talk. That's okay. We will. Could be started we, on we that will, edge. Yeah, we will, yeah, 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 yeah. Next time we'll skip Christine. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing it did, it bought me time while I had a sneezing fit. Yeah. Oh, I moved to approve the minutes has amended. And then some. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. I will thank Amy for you. So yes, we now have meetings scheduled for April 7th, which is next week, mm -hmm. and then again uh, on April uh, 28th. 28th. So what is the 14th? Is that something? It's our free night. It it's our like. free night? Okay. Well, the thing is, is that I'm not sure, like, the one thing we'd have for next week would probably be, uh, hopefully, uh, the report on the, uh, I'm not I'm not sure what we've got for agenda items yet for April 7th. Do you, Carol? Uh, <coughs> Do we have anything that... I think I can check for you. I guess I'm just trying to figure out, you know, keep it on your calendars, but I guess... This is the April 7th? Yeah, April 7th, yeah. We have... I'm sorry, we do have something. Oh, we do? Good. I, I think well, we do. Or... Is it the 14th? Is that Passover? Yes, it is. It's the first. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. Mm. And the 
next week. It's, it's President's, <laughs> Day. President's Day. Or, oh, I'm sorry, Patriot's Day. Oh, Patriot's Day yeah. is after Easter, right? Correct. So, well, Carol, we, that's okay. We can, we can figure it out. So right now we're scheduled for a meeting next week. <clears throat> Depending upon what we have to talk about, we'll see whether okay. that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So, but for right now, the schedule is the 7th and the 28th. All right. Good. Uh, the the, um, the note doesn't have details. So that's fine. I don't have it. Either. Yeah, yeah. So, so right now we're scheduled. So that's what it is, and uh, we'll figure out whether we got something. Okay. All right. Uh, so is that kind of the evening? Anybody? This is where we start the Carol Yeah, exactly. 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 I move to adjourn. Anyone want a second? A second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.